you are attacking no, our news not you. organization, not you. can you give us a chance? Your organization You are attacking terrible. our news organization. Your organization Can you give us a chance Let's to go. ask a question? We have uh, basically a, a liberal heckler who snuck in here today. These newspapers and the media are totally dishonest people, folks. Remember that. Contrary to the false and dishonest reporting, of the liberal media. Yeah, I think the media is the opposition party in many ways. I think uh, CP should stop acting as the communications arm of the PMO. You know, when, when I look at the media, how one-sided it is, how biased it is. Well, first of all, you, you your question was typical of CBC, biased again. You are attacking no, our okay. Now we're back to the beginning. I just, just want everybody to appreciate what we're looking at right now. This is a tweet video that the liberal party put out yesterday. January 9, they put out a video criticizing how Trump and Pierre Poilievre mistreat state propaganda. It's a very convenient time for them to have put this video up because you may or may not recall, shortly uh, before that video, you had Justin Trudeau's um, Gestapo. Why is your government supporting Islamo nationalism? What? You did me. What? You did me. What? What are you doing? You're under arrest for assault. What, sir? Why are you pushing me? You're under arrest for assault. You're under arrest for assault. You're under arrest for assault. Who are you? You're under arrest for assault. You pushed into me. You pushed into me. I was just scrubbing with you. I got my credentials here and you just bumped into me. So excuse me. Police. You're under arrest. What's your name in your bag? Okay. So just appreciate everybody. The Liberal Party puts out a video trying to demonize Trump and Pierre Poilievre for their treatment of state-funded propaganda, the media. The day after Justin Trudeau's RCMP, I don't know, I think it was RCMP, falsely imprisons, bogusly arrests a, a member of Rebel News Media. It is Darvo. It's what narcissist abusers do. Deny, Darvo. Deny, attack, reverse victim and offender. It's what narcissists and abusive people do, and you got to watch out for it, and it's what's going on right now. Okay, people, let me just make sure that we're live across all of the interwebs on which uh, we uh, stream. I tried to put out a stream in advance of this uh, live stream, a vlog in advance of this live stream, so I could link to uh, John Burke's info. I got the vlog out, uh, but I accidentally uploaded it straight to YouTube with uh, the, the date or the number of the video, and that'll kill it. But it's on, it's on Rumble. And it's about Fanny Willis and her new boyfriend billing up the Fanny. Uh, okay. Are we live on Rumble as, uh, on Viva Barnes Law just before we get into this? Let me see here. Enter the stream. We are live. Okay, good. We are live. All right. Now, John Burke. You, I, 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 I'm, I'm interested to see how much of our respective audiences overlap. I ran into John at the, um, the RNC debate. I want to say it was the fourth. I think it was the fourth. It was the one in Tuscaloosa where I drove up with my kid uh, from basically Miami to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Stopped along the way at Allison Morrow. If you don't know her, check her out. And it was amazing. We met there and we talked and we got along and he's a cool guy. And with all of this, I'm, I'm, I feel guilty that I'm partaking or at least I'm, I'm facilitating it the infighting between the DeSantis supporters, Team DeSantis, hashtag Team DeSantis, and hashtag Team Trump, I've had enough of it, um, and I know where uh, John Burke lies, I would say, uh, politically at least on this issue, and I think we're going to have a good discussion. Mr. Burke, are you ready to come in for the battle? Yeah, he's ready. Okay, we're bringing him in. Add to stage, sir, how goes the battle? Viva, you ignorant slut. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you beat me too. I was gonna, I was, I was gonna ask you the first question. Why are DeSantis supporters so annoying? <laughs> I thought you were going for the bathrobe, bro. Like as, well, soon, we'll get... as soon as soon as you started this thing, you're like, are you in a bathrobe? Like, how I... dare you? It, it was it was 30 minutes ago. I come in. I said, you look yeah. like Hugh Hefner a little bit. It was buttoned up. You look. Oh, beautiful. that's red. That's red with the velvet. This is different. This is well, what, actually what I'm is that burning called? alive now. Is that? Is I, that know, I, I got it in Valencia. I was. It's just a really nice sweater. It's. It was. It wasn't expensive. What it's is um? Cardigan. What's Valencia? That's town in Portugal. 
Oh, okay, fine, fine, fine. Because it's not a, it's not a. I was thinking of like Balenciaga. Oh, the peasants. Valencia. Oh, yeah. no, I'm sorry. Valencia's in Spain. Valencia's in Spain. Excuse me. No, no. I just, I, I went for the holidays. We went to. Uh, I like to travel over the holidays, so we went to Portugal and Spain. I love taking in other people's cultures because I find that, um, dude, it's so eye opening, and I, I love getting to see different people's ways of life. And in Europe, especially, everything is just so chill. It's so relaxed. Americans, I mean, you're Canadian. I'm not sure how that translates into Canada versus America. But in American culture, we are so just go, 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 go. But over in Europe, I mean, their thing is like they go to a cafe, they order a coffee, they sit down, they talk to people, they relax, they people watch. There is not the just incessant go, go, go that is American culture. And I love that. I love that. Did you go to Paris this time around? Uh, I was there last year. We went to, we flew into Paris. We spent Christmas in Paris. And one thing I've learned is that, and I was stationed in Europe when I was in the army and I forgot about this, but during the holidays, everything is closed. Europe is not Amazon prime era like America. Europe is like, they actually take, they take pride in being with their families and they, they, they do that. And I support, I like that. So uh, we spent it, we spent Christmas in Paris and then we went up to, um, Oh God, we went from Paris to Edinburgh. Um, we, we spent New Year's there. And then in between that, we hit London. I got to go visit Shakespeare's Globe Theater and see Henry V, one of my favorite plays. And it was, uh, it was dude, it's, it's such, and I've been to Paris before, but I never got to go to the Louvre. And if you've never been to the Louvre, uh, it takes days. Uh, like, look, you, it's, it's, it, it is, it is, it's too big for one day. It's too big for- Oh more. yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I walk in there's like, all right, let's see what this is about. You're like, oh. Like, this is huge. Huge. It's a huge. Uh, but now, hold on one second. You, you, you say you go to Spain. I still have trauma from what my mother uh, said to me as a kid. She said, in Spain, when we were kids, they mug you with syringes that are filled. They say it's filled with HIV blood. And if you don't give me your luggage, <laughs> they're going to stab you. I remember these stories from childhood. I, well, I've never, I've never I'm still getting the, you know, I've, I've, I've been... <laughs> I was really trying to get a joke out of that one, but I got nothing. I got no. no I mean, it's, it's like any place you go, dude. It, it depends on where you visit. Stay out of the back alleys. Don't try and you know go visit these establishments that don't they don't like don't aren't well lit. Um, you, you know, just be a common sense smart well, traveler. I, I lived in Paris in ninety nine to two thousand, oh, okay. and, and I said then it was I did a there year exchange from McGill, and I said then I'll probably never go back to the country because even then, this is twenty five years ago. They were having the problems yeah. that they're having today, but today it's on Much steroids. more so, yeah, yeah. Went back in 2015 to do a marathon up in uh, one of the <clears throat> one of the mountains, and we went through Paris. I, I said, this "Bro, is that's it, awesome! Good for you! I used to do marathons. Good for you!" Yeah, it, it was it was called it was part of the Sky Series. It was a okay. marathon in Mont Blanc, and then oh, it was totally cool. the, the day we get there. I discover they have a it's called the Kilometre Vertical. It's a vertical kilometer. So it's okay. like a three kilometer race where you ascend. This a sounds like some BDSM stuff at this point. Like you're just oh. willfully, it's bad enough just running a marathon. Now you're adding inclines to this. Like what's no, wrong no, with this, you? This was the day before. And I was like, I've never heard of this thing. So I, oh, I the day to, before the marathon. Yeah. And so I wanted to do this race. Cause it's like one of a kind. <laughs> and I get there and they're like, no dude, this has been filled up for nine months. And I said, surely oh, okay. someone did not come in. Like someone's ticket is open. And then I met someone who liked me. They let me do it. I made a video about it. This is back a decade uh, Link, ago. I would love to see that. Oh, I, it's, it's, bro, it's, that's it's, awesome. It's, it's, it's traveling strange. to do or pursue things. I do tango as well. So we're going to Istanbul in March. There's a massive tango festival there. It's the, you know, like when you think of like Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it'd be like the Gracie's teaching somewhere. And I know that sounds gay as hell, but I don't care because it's Dude, just, I, I love you, tango. I, I was going to get to the joke that sooner than later, what's the type of dancing? Yeah, I know. But what, what is, I wasn't going to call it tango. What is the type of dancing that you do? Um, Argentinian another, tango. Okay. But I think what's another word for that type of dance? Um, I want to. Say, I feel like you're leading me into a punchline here. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to think. <laughs> I had the, the word will come back to me. Okay. John, we we've gotten fairly into this before anybody on my end who doesn't know who you are mm -hmm. gets the elevator pitch of who you are. Mm -hmm. John, who are you? Oh God, we're going deep that quick, oh, we're, huh? We're, That's we're, what she we're, said. We're, this, <laughs> we're, we're going thirty thousand, then we're going deep. This is why I wanted to have this discussion. With, okay, I'm taking this off now because like it's hot as balls. This thing it was, works. It was flamenco, not uh, lombada. It was flamenco. <laughs> flamenco, dancing. yes, yeah. yeah so. Flamenco is different though. That's Spain. You're thinking Spanish. This is Argentinian. So when you look at the history of, say, for example, flamenco, it's not. Tango's only been around for 150 years. Tango is a a byproduct of ballroom dancing. The rich elites did ballroom. The peasant class did tango and tango was literally birthed by guys dancing with other guys outside of brothels waiting to get in line to get laid. I am not making this up. I swear you can go look this up. You can go look this up. And being that tango was so prevalent 
there were so many guys and not enough women. So women had their their choice, their pick of the litter. They could say, I'm going to dance with this guy because he's good. So men had to get very competitive to dance with the beautiful women. So tango at core is a lot about how life is, especially relationships. It does take two to tango. There has to be a lead. There has to be a follower. Women can lead too. I've seen men dance with men, women dance with women. It's really up to you. It goes back from, again, the origins of tango. But flamenco, that's a true Spanish. And that goes, that's way older than tango. So there you go. Okay, now the 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 flam- oh, the tango dance or uh, it is tango that I seen you doing on Twitter mm-hmm. is with your significant other. That's my fiance Sheila, yeah. Okay, and I met you just, her. You did, met, yeah. You okay. met Sheila there. When, when I did didn't you- know who you were. I'm stepping up to the rumble booth to go do my spiel, and then I see this like fray hair, and it's like, oh, I thought it was black. <laughs> I swear to God, dude, I saw your logo, and for some reason, I'm thinking you're black. And then I see you, I was like, is that the same guy? And it's like, oh, okay, okay. This, is, this was an internal discussion we had at Team Viva when I when we launched that. It's like, are, am I going to get accused of blackface in that? No, no, well, no. I said, no, I, said no. I don't care at a given point. I'm, I'm not even going to have these thoughts in my head. No, um, dude, no, no. That's just that's on me because it's it's a blackface with the glasses, but it's just a logo. It's not you're not doing blackface. Oh, but geez. no, I I uh I don't. I'll say this right off the bat. I don't consume other people's content, and it's not because I don't like it. I will go to certain people's channels to see what they have to say about an issue. Um, I have watched yours since I've met you, and there are there is actually it's horseshoe theory with you and I, as with I think many of the people out there, we agree on, I'd say like 95% of most things, but there are some minor things that we do disagree on. But I also feel like that's why the media tries to capitalize on that to drive even further wedges. Because honestly, they're not politically oriented. What they're focusing on is ad rev. And as long as they can keep the divide, as long as politicians can keep us arguing over that 5%, well, then there's a need for politicians. There's a, a much stronger need for that. But you're a Trump guy. I'm a DeSantis guy. So a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm a constitutionalist at bet, Ben. Uh, you're not going to find me defending DeSantis when I don't agree with him. You're not going to find me defending Trump um, blindly. I, I refuse to do it. I used to be. I voted for Trump twice. I used to do that. But I feel like if you're just honest with yourself, if you're honest with your audience and you say, look, we don't have to assume the political identities of those that we're voting for. We can still stand true for true constitutional values. And when DeSantis says something I don't agree with, I'll be the first one to tell you. It's like, I don't care if people don't follow me. I genuinely don't care. I'm on an Instagram tirade right now. Um, I tell people this is where I stand and it's the founding document. It's the constitution. And if DeSantis sways from it, he loses my support. Trump's veered from it. I can't support Trump. So I just actually want to go back to one thing where you said, uh, you mentioned it to me in person, like where you don't consume other people's content. And I, I, for those who are not in the realm, it's an interesting thing. Like I, I had never thought of it that way before, but you don't want to get influenced by what other people think. Yeah. And so when you end up yeah. watching, I don't know, say any given one, yeah. you're gonna, there's a certain part of you that is going to well, absorb like that. Like smart then, dudes like yourself, it's easily, I could easily watch your stuff. Like, oh yeah, no, I agree with this. Like, but do I really agree with it? But it's good to have these conversations though, because I like the fact that number one, you're not stupid. You don't make it as far as you do and be intellectually stupid. I mean, you, 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 you know what you're doing. So when I have these types of discussions, you can ask Sheila, like I told her this morning in the gym, I was like, I'm a little anxious about this discussion. It's like, because this guy is not an idiot. He is going to make me question what I believe and why I believe it. But I've done that. And it's like, I feel like we just, we see things differently on some things. No, I, Does it I, mean I, I hate you? It's like, that's why you're an ignorant slut and I hate you and I want you dead. I mean, no, it doesn't mean that at all. I'm wondering how many people- <laughs> Not a lot of are, people get that reference, I was, by I was, the way. I was not gonna say like, <laughs> so not a lot of people watched SNL back when no. it was funny. And that's like no. the late seventies, early eighties. First of all, how old are you? Oh, bro, I'm only 39. I know you're young. Okay. Well, actually, but that I'm, just, that- That goes to prove, though, that great comedy that has not been influenced by this woke Marxist nonsense transcends time because it's funny. It's funny. We should laugh at this. Absolutely. I mean, the the greatest of SNLs for those who are on DVDs or remember even VHSs, it's it's the funniest stuff of all time. Who is your favorite? Uh, Well, I mean, I'd say Adam Sandler, but that's just because I'm I'm a little partial. But Chevy Chase is one of the greats. And, um, and Eddie okay, you see, I don't know, man. Like, I thought Chevy Chase's comedy is a lot like Bill Murray's. It definitely has its own niche. But I don't think it's enough to kind of, like, have this this nucleus to build around. Like, I liked the Chris Farley's, but I guess that's maybe because I'm more animated comedy. But well, they were funny. still great. They were still great. Don't get well, me wrong. Funny. Yeah. But funny you mentioned it, because I love Bill Murray as well. Right up. I, think, I yeah. don't think I've really not liked anything Bill Murray has done, maybe except for the Ghostbusters 4, 
where he, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, yeah, he allowed himself yeah. to get killed in that movie, yeah. right? He, he got killed? I didn't watch it, dude. I can't watch the, the nonsense. Um, speaking of that, did you see the new, new Napoleon? N Napoleon the movie or Napoleon yeah, Dynamite scene? the movie. No. <laughs> no, God, I wish. No, 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 the new movie. No, I haven't seen it. I watched it last night and Absolute I was rubbish. telling... Uh, <laughs> It's not what I thought it would be. You know, you've got a great director. I thought Napoleon was going to kind of take on this approach of looking into the history of Napoleon because some people view this guy as a tyrannical dictator. Other people view him as a freedom fighter. So when you look at his positioning throughout the French Revolution and thereafter, it's like it, it definitely calls into question of like what is tyrannical and what is actual freedom fighting. But this was a love story and it wasn't a very good love story. It jumped like, bro, it jumped years in like just quick segments. I'm like, we've missed a lot here. So this, was, this is Ridley Scott, right? It's his latest yeah, movie. Yeah. What did he do? Who did the gladiator? Is oh, God. The, the chat will get it before we can get it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, now, I, I, I think I know this answer, but based on your accent, you are from New York, New Jersey, right? No, I'm from Texas, bro. Oh, really? Nobody can pin me down. Okay, born and raised in Texas. Born and raised in Texas. And I'll tell you why, because I used to have that accent. But when I served in the military, I was in the infantry, and I, I recognized that when you're enlisted and you got to deal with officers, officers are all graduates of some type of, uh, whether they be West Pointers, uh, Ivy Leaguers, or community college, doesn't matter. What resonates with them is when you sound and you uh, sound intelligent and you can articulate your points without sounding like a trailer park, re, trailer park redneck. That's one thing I learned that you've got to be able to do that to speak their lingo for them to actually listen to anything you have to say, even though the things that you're saying make freaking sense because it's through experience. But yeah, but no, I, I grew up, I did spend uh, summers up in New York with my family. Okay, so b b born and raised in Texas, what did your parents do? Mom was a daycare provider. She still is. Dad, um, he was an Air Force veteran, and then he worked for Boeing, truck driving. I didn't really know my father very well. He he left when I was like five. So I was the latchkey kid generation to where, you know, you come home from school and your mom would say, you know, latch the door till I get home from work on my second job. So my mom definitely worked to put food on the table. I respect it for that. But it was a broken home. Very, very, very broken home. Uh, how many siblings? Just one. My older brother. So one older brother, parents get divorced at a young age. Mm. Uh, do you have any recollection and any memories of the, the nature of the relationship before the divorce or none whatsoever? Oh, just not happy. I feel like we're, is this like on the couch with Frey? Do you know who Tyler Fisher is, the stand-up comic? You, you, you've no. undoubtedly, he does an amazing Jordan Peterson accent. He's on Twitter. Oh, we, Jordan we Peterson. One. Holy crap. We went, we, hold, I on, went, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen hold to on. this. Here, let me hear your opinion on this one. I'm going to close my eyes. So it's a lot like lobsters. You know, you're out there and you're, you got to be an alpha male. So that's, that's what we're doing here. That's Jordan Peterson. That's actually think, not, it's not terrible. And you actually you. have some of the demeanor of Ty yeah. Fisher as well. Yeah. Go, Ty Fisher does. I would say that's intentional, but yeah, we both know it's not now. No, no, no. Well, go, I, I kind of do all this stuff, Viva. I'm all about the freedom. You know, just mention some oil on your channel. I'm going to invade it for freedom, baby. <laughs> Look out, Dick's got a gun. <laughs> chick, chat, chick, do chick, the chat says pretty good. <laughs> Thank you, and then, thank you. And then one person says me. Um, so your dad was uh, uh, in the military. Yeah, Air Force. Uh, you grow up. I mean, look, what's childhood in Texas? Uh, yeah. we won't, we're not going to spend an hour on this. But oh, it's in fine. Texas, it's fine, brother. What did I'm you cool. study and how do you end up in the military? Oh, man, from a young age, I'd always wanted to be a soldier. I think, uh, you know, it's it was like that that proverbial rite of passage into becoming a, a man. You know, the young boy wants to, you know, my, my father would take me to the Blue Angels air shows. I'd see the Vietnam um, traveling uh, what would you call them? The the static displays. I'd see the punji pits, the dog tags, the M16s, the helmets, the grenades. It's like, yeah, it's like freedom. Um, and it, it definitely signifies uh, in my my short 40 years how I used to believe that. I, I, I've changed my tune because I did, like I said, I did 13 years in the military. I did four and a half years in Iraq and Afghanistan. I served in the worst places imaginable. And I'm one of those veterans that looks back and I feel lied to. By the government. I feel lied to is the fact of saying there were no weapons of mass destruction. Do I think what Saddam was doing was horrendous? Absolutely. But if I was to rewind and say, wait a minute, but that's not our business. That's why I'm more of a libertarian these days. I don't like having a strong foreign policy in the sense of getting involved where democracy is supposed to be at stake. We saw that with Vietnam. We were lied to by the government by saying there was a spread of communism, which it was, but that's not our business. But 
ultimately, man, I felt like, you know, I wanted to join the army to number one, get away from home. I had a very broken childhood and I was raised by the army. And now, um, since I've, <clears throat> excuse me, gotten out at like since 2016, I've had to kind of explore more as to who it is that I am. Because when you're 17, man, you are still, you are still impressionable. You, how old are you? Uh, 45, going to be 45. Yeah, so, so yeah, you know, you know, like when you hit your thirties, you really hit the stride of like, who the hell am I? Like you really start asking those if you're, if you have any cognizant abilities, but that's what I've kind of felt like I've been on this journey outside of the military. Cause at 17 years old, it's very easy to become brainwashed when you surround yourself in an echo chamber. And I'm not condemning the military. I, no, I would that, do it again. That, that, that I would is do it again. The purpose of training. It's to remove, oh, yeah. I mean, you'll tell me if I'm wrong, yes. to remove the individual no. identity and make yep. it for group think in the military. You had to setting. dehumanize your enemy. Absolutely. Seven, you get in at 17 and you do 13 <clears throat> years. Is that 13 years full time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't part time, man. <laughs> 13 years. So you're no, getting out, you're, you're turning 30. I, and I'm, I'm not saying this with any. No, 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 bro. You're not going to offend me. Go ahead. No, so, I'm not like that. 30, you've never had a job outside of the military. So let me back up on that one. I was, ooh, I don't think it was 30. I think I was like, well, maybe, okay, maybe you're right. Because I did have a year and a half break. Yeah, 28, 29. But no, you're right. It, I never had a job. Well, I did have a year and a half break in service. So I did hold civilian jobs, but I, I continuously got fired. But not for the reasons that you think. The reasons were kind of like the mission came first. So I work for a railroad company that does stenciling on the side of train cars and welding. And back then, and still even more so today, like OSHA was like draconian, like the Nazism of OSHA. For example, what got me fired was I would, uh, instead of like unfold a ladder and set it beside a train car to walk up the side to put the decal on, I just lean it against the train car and walk up. They fire me. And I was just like, okay. It makes sense. I get it. But for me, it was kind of like the stencil's got to get done, whatever. So, but no, I, I couldn't, I couldn't really hold jobs because um, I did have a massive sense of entitlement. I'll admit that. I mean, my God, dude, you take a boy from 17 years old and you throw him into a year and a half tour in Iraq where he's shooting dudes, seeing his brothers getting killed. And then he comes out and you, you say, well, go be normal now. And it's very difficult not to walk away with some sort of, um, man, they're, the personalities or the, the characteristics are numerous. I mean, sense of entitlement to think that, you know, how the world works, even at a young age, you still don't, you've seen how bad the world can be, but you still don't get how the overall world works. So there was a lot that went into my childhood that has, I think helped me make better choices as a man, as a business owner. Now, um, what time and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be hogging all the conversation here. No, I, I do first apologize all, for first that. First of all, don't worry. I'm start this crying is, over here, bro. Well, I, I want to, first of all, you're making me jealous with the Celsius. My, my wife is, um, <laughs> she, I, I, I've turned off of anything with sucralose in as much as I can avoid it. Bro, and yeah. There's something called True North. It's just carbonated, it's caffeinated carbonated water. My wife is getting. I've never heard of this. It's, True it, North? It's, it's just carbonated water with caffeine. It's, it's fantastic. Flavored carbonated water with caffeine, a little bit of nutrients. Okay. Um, what did you do in the military? Were you infantry? Infantry. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you are, everybody always wants to ask that, that question of, you know, cops and whatever, but you are seeing the, the, the shit of the shit. Like it's, mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no more embedded than infantry. No, that's what I wanted though. Like I felt like, cause I originally went to the Marines first and they couldn't guarantee me infantry. They said, when you pass boot camp, you beat the needs and meet the needs of the Marine Corps. And I was like, eh, no, because I don't want to go through boot camp and then be a cook. I'm not knocking cooks. It's not my job, though. It's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to actually squeeze the trigger. And again, I was, you know, you're young. You want to become a man. You want to seek the approval of others. And that's why I picked infantry. The army was kind of like, hey, we'll give you infantry over here. It's like, okay. And that's back when it was like 212 ways to be a soldier. So it was 2001. And bro, would you believe me if I flew, if I told you I flew out of New York uh, on 910? I flew uh, out of New York the day before. I think I told you the story. Yeah, you told me this in person. Yes, the day before 9-11 yes. of the 9-11, yeah, 2000. Of 9-11. I'd enlisted before. So I was saying goodbye to my family. And then sure enough, God's like, oh, I, got a, I got a plan for you, Burke. You just don't know it yet. So the world trade happened. And I was like, wow, I guess I'm not going to a peacetime army anymore. So it was, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I served in places like Fallujah, Al-Najaf, um, Baghdad, um, 17 months, our first tour. And then I got out for a year and a half, got married, had my children. And at a very young age, because my Southern upbringing was you get married young, you have children, you work and you die. So that's why I encourage people. It's like pump the brakes, live some life, 
experience who it is that you are, make sure this is what you want. There is no rush. You do not have to have children young in life unless you absolutely want it. That's fine. But um, then I got out, I went back in, I went to the 504th Military Intelligence Battalion at Fort Hood as an infantry guy. They deployed me with them as a personal security guy. So they'd go out there and run sourcing. And so I got some behind the scenes look at how military intelligence operates and not in the aspect of like, oh, it's such an oxymoron. Like I saw how the bread was made and it was very interesting. It was very in depth and a lot of stuff that um, I don't want to say I can't talk about. I just don't want to talk about it because I feel like that would give away a lot of trade secrets. But there are things that they uh, operate by or they do that it's like, wow, I'm. it's very alarming to see that you can do this to the enemy but what happens when you turn this on civilians? And I know they do that. So it's just one of these issues that when people think that the, the government is not spying, when they think the government does not have the ability to tap into your cell phone, oh, bro, they're 10 leagues ahead of you. No, no, they, no, they, they're 10 leagues ahead of you. So, um, yeah. Let me ask, I've, I've never actually asked anybody this, this way. You mm -hmm. undoubtedly have one specific distinct memory that stands out when you think of your 13 years in service. Oh God, you know, uh, no, I, I'd say there's many. Um, and you know, what's weird about that? It's, it's the bad ones. You would, you'd you think, it. yeah, you'd think that we'd cling to the good memories and, and you know, there are some, there are some, but I think a lot of them are kind of coupled with bad. So it was the, in mo most of them were firefights, like really, really bad fight. Like if you've watched, um, the hornet's nest, that's about us. Uh, it's a movie that came out, um, Restrepo wasn't about my unit. It was about, and this, this is how crazy it is, brother. Like the Restrepo was about um, this, this combat outpost in the Korngol Valley in Afghanistan. It was dubbed the world's most deadliest valley. And when Restrepo came out, I want to say this was in like 2007, 2008. And nobody really knew about Afghanistan. Everyone knew about Iraq. Everyone was talking about Iraq, Fallujah, Baghdad. Afghanistan was like akin to the Korean War, the Forgotten War. Nobody really knew about it. And then Afghanistan, really, you start seeing some casualty numbers rack up and like, wait, what's going on in Afghanistan? So Restrepo comes out and <clears throat> we, I was in the 101st Airborne. So our unit, it was the 4th Infantry Division that was currently there where Restrepo was made. Now, Restrepo was years prior. It was uh, 2007, 2008. Then 4th ID relieved them. And then we relieve 4th ID, just to give you that so you have context when I'm about to tell you. Our 4th ID people said, watch Restrepo, the documentary about the people we relieved, to see what you're walking into. Brother, I'm not lying. I watched that movie, and this is after three and a half years of fight in Iraq. I watched that movie, and I looked at my wife, and I was like, I'm scared. I was like, I'm, this is, you, have you seen that scene in, um, Oh God, it's so weird that we're referencing movie culture, but it's there's the, so the much only, truth to this. The only two war movies I can think of offhand that I've seen, uh, Black Hawk Down, Saving Private Ryan. We Were Soldiers? Uh, we Were Soldiers, yes, but With too Mel long Gibson. ago. Yeah, that well, was there's a scene long. in there where they're literally, it's the, it's the hype up to the Eadrang Valley. You, you see all these guys that have all this combat experience saying, this is like nothing we've ever seen. We're, we're walking into something we've never, ever seen before. Like the Vietnamese, the North Vietnamese army should not be underestimated. This is a very, very deadly enemy. It was the same for the Taliban. I would never disrespect the Taliban in the sense of saying, oh, there isn't. No, these are the, the generational fighters that Alexander the Great couldn't even conquer. Napoleon, nobody can conquer these people. So for Americans to walk in there with this just uppity of like, well, we're Americans, the things that that crippled Americans over there is that it was our own rules of, of engagement. They're not fighting by rules. We we were literally the British redcoats in the American Revolution. We are out there walking clear as day with uniforms on, and they're not. So you can't fight a fair war in that in that manner. And that's why I always say war isn't fair. And until America adopts these policies of getting into the dirt and saying, look, I like Patton's third army approach. We're going to blitzkrieg your ass until submission. And then we'll be fair. But after that, it, like what Israel's doing in Gaza, uh, it's that's actually, war. That's, that's I mean, war. It's exactly where I was going for two reasons. <clears throat> yeah. One of which is talking about a generation of, of militants brought up literally yeah. in death, yeah. living in tunnels. Their the mm -hmm. sole purpose of life is death to kill versus yeah. Israeli soldiers who love life, love family, and yeah. th that's already sort of an uh, not an imbalance on the conflict scale. Yeah. But then yeah. also, 
hold one to standards of ethics. I know, yeah, and I know that, yes, how unfair is that? And that's why I try and make people understand, it's like, look, when war gets put on the table, what you need to understand is it's not rules. This is anarchy. This is chaos. That's what war truly is. So if that's what you want, you can't pearl clutch when women and children are getting killed in the crossfire. That's what happens. So, and I don't want to go down the Hamas thing, but I'm just saying that no, war sure. should be avoided at all costs. It well, should be the is, last it's, thing. It's, it's two things. Actually, the idea of rules of war where you can't shoot the parachuters or the power gliders in the sky, but you have to wait for them to touch down before you can shoot them. It, it, rules Fuck of war. Fuck that. That's, I mean, that's it, stupid. It's, it's like, it's shit, never, dude, that's the enemy. Like, shoot them. I it's never care. made any. Oh, no, let let him get in a better position to attack me so that it makes it harder for me to defend. Oh, uh, bro. And but then, then the, you're, arguing, you're arguing the Rommel stance, which Rommel was the same way. The Desert Fox in World War II. Rommel had a code, and he actually wasn't a Nazi. Rommel was the, he was the master arm uh, fighter. Like Patton wanted to go at it with Rommel. Patton, if you look at the history of Patton, Patton was one of those guys that he did have a, a code of ethics and honor on the battlefield. You can, I, I, when I, when, when you talk about something like that, I think of like the English, I think the British, like, oh, I say we shall take the field at no later than 1300 and three bells open fire and then be done for tea. That's how they, they had a standard and it's respectable, but if I want to win, Bro, I'm murdering you by the bushels. That's what Patton believed in, is that we're going to grease the tread of our tanks with their intestines, and we're going to murder these sons of bitches. Rommel was different. So it's like, which methodology do you subscribe to? Ultimately, the victors tell the tale. So who's going to win? Now, you come out of the war, you come out of your experience feeling like you've been lied to, and this is where I take yeah. some issue with, with some people online. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah, even, yeah. Even with military experience pushing, go to war in Ukraine, et cetera. Oh, God, so no, no, I'm, I'm against the war in Ukraine. Senator, yeah. du Senator Duckworth lost both of her, both of her legs in Iraq. Is, mm -hmm. is that? And I know you're point, talking about, yeah. At one point, she puts out a tweet, and, you know, it's, it's let's go to war in Ukraine. And I said, hey, send your kids. Don't, don't be a coward. There you go, yeah and, then, yeah. and then someone says to me, she lost Frank, both of her legs let me, in Iraq. Let me, let me push pause on this real quick with me. Brother, just because you're a veteran does not mean you know what the fuck you're talking about. So if you want to bash veterans, you have the clearance by me. You go well, right no, the fuck ahead, no, dude. It, no, because it's, it's, I've seen veterans like uh, McCain. I've seen veterans like Kitzinger. It's like, what the fuck are you on about? Like, you want to send our kids? It's like, you just got done fighting this global war where we were lied to, and now you want to get us involved in more nonsense? Like, that's a Putin issue. Well, that, and we can and, go and, in the rabbit hole, but I just want you to know, you're not going to offend me. You want to criticize a veteran, bro, you go right the fuck ahead. Well, you deserve it, absolutely. It's not, it's not criticizing a veteran in their capacity as a veteran. It's what it's they say. They, they're not, they don't get... Uh, a, a pass on bad politics yes. and Duckworth lost both of her legs. I in agree. Iraq, like, and you want to send more people to have that happen in Ukraine? Okay, hold on. I'm going to cough for one second. Now, <laughs> I'll cough uh, for you. No, I, I tell you. <laughs> I'm hacking stuff up too, brother. Oh, dude, I go to Canada. I get a sinus infection. I'm, the sinus <laughs> infection is over, but I got some lingering, whatever. That's what um, you get for going to Canada. Yeah, <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing, bro. Oh, I do want to visit Canada. I do want to visit Canada I, because I, I've I I've guilty. seen how beautiful it can be up there. I feel guilty saying it. Every time I go back, I'm nervous because I don't know if I'm going to get locked up, have a bank account frozen, whatever. I no really? longer feel comfortable going back to Canada. Well, I and didn't know you covered the trucker protest. Kudos to you, by the way, because I thought that whole thing. And by the way, I do agree. The thing you've been hitting on as far as the arresting of the journalist oh. for bumping in. I'm like, dude, I'm, I, that's why I say I agree with you on so much stuff out there. It's like, no, this is fascism. That is the very definition of fascism. It's, so, it's exactly like that. It's the episode of The Simpsons where Krabappel was just looking for a reason to give everyone detention so she could turn them into meat pie and drop the pen. Detention. The cop, it goes like this. Arrest. Now, but hold on. Before we get into the thick of it, I'm yeah, ending yeah. this on YouTube. Ending on YouTube. Come over to Rumble. And here's the link. Because we're the first thing we're going to do... Uh, John, I said I'm going to try to not convince you that I'm right, but at least have the discussion... On Absolutely. the Roger Stone. The Roger Stone. Oh, see you God. next Tuesday. So, everybody, <laughs> come, come on Let's over to Rumble. It. I'm ending on YouTube in three, two, one. Okay. Isn't <sighs> it funny? Because I do the same thing with YouTube. I used to have like 300 something thousand followers and they banned me for COVID misinformation. Wow. Brother, when I tell you, I have never put my position myself in this position of I'm the subject matter expert on COVID. I simply said, I don't trust. I subscribe to the Milton Friedmanism style of politics of like, I wish... We would abolish the FDA. It has done far more bad than it has good. When you look at places like England and the methods they utilize, it's far more effective as far as what medications people are allowed to and not take. Um, but my positioning was, let there be freedom to choose. If you want to get the jab, get the jab. 
I'm not going to knock you for it. I don't trust the government. We saw what they, would, what they did with Agent Orange. The burn pits in Iraq and Afghanistan are causing veterans cancer left and right. And what do they do? Then they come back and say, oh, we're sorry after a generation has passed and died. And there's nobody held accountable for it. So I see the same thing happening here, quite honestly. It, so no, no, it's 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 that's it's, what um, I hate about YouTube. But you, I hate you got, the fact you got, that you can't do that with YouTube. You got nuked on YouTube? <clears throat> Bro, I lost it all. I had seven hundred thousand on Facebook. I had three hundred thousand on YouTube, three hundred something thousand on Instagram. I lost it all because of my principles. It's like I am not gonna bend any. That's why I I don't agree with hundred percent of how Rumble runs their platform, but who the fuck does? Um, you know, when you own your own company, no one's ever gonna agree hundred percent with how you run it. But I am grateful that Rumble has this platform, like where we can even have this discussion. Because you and I can't do this on YouTube. There is uh, well, no I'm, way in hell. I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it. Like I, I have my issues with YouTube. I've gotten mm. one ridiculous strike for medical misinformation when a Same. doctor was telling a doctor. I, do, doc, I know. Doctor Francis like, Christian. I know. <laughs> I, know. So I think it's been removed now because I took the online. I took the retraining and made a video about that. It was kind of funny. Are you serious? Oh the, yeah, it's called. Um, Basically, it's called like a, what's the word? Not sensitizing. You got to go answer some questions. Sensitivity training or whatever. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It, and then they then they wipe your. It is a it's a it's a freaking joke. And I made a video. No, you got to play so the game. Yeah, hilarious. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's what I'm but, grateful for. Rumble. No, but but I'm, 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 I'm going to go put this all on. I'm going to put it on YouTube afterwards. And if I have a problem, I'll have a problem. Uh, okay. I just don't want you to see you get like my uh, my thing. No, like so. I, we, I put up one yesterday where we were talking about ivermectin and the alleged mm. 17,000 17, deaths from ivermectin. Did you read that? Did you read that study? No, but I mean, come on, like what really, ivermectin was an award-winning drug prior to that. So you're telling me uh, it's just uh, no, no, it's, yeah, it's right fi fi fifty years with not with no incidents, and then you had 17, who created 000. the jab, Viva? Who created the jab? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, what's even more amazing is. They're they're what? now I'm retroactively. Real, I'm sorry. What is your first name? David. David. I, yeah, I don't want to call you. David. Oh, don't want to. David Freiheit. It means freedom in German. No, they're going Freiheit? back. I'm German as well. What's your, what is your last name? Burke. Uh, just like the that. old version. Yeah, it means uh, fortress. Yeah. My old ancestors were German to Ireland to here. That's a, oh, so between us, my last name verbatim Freiheit means freedom in German. So we got the freedom for it. No shit. So yeah. what yours came from Germany to, uh, po to Canada? My, my granddad Poland? was okay. born in Poland. We're all we're all obviously Jewish and Eastern mm -hmm. European. Granddad was from Poland. Bro, God bless you. How you holding up during these times? Because I, I have never seen so much anti-Semitism. Like everybody's like I, you it, side with the goys. Like I'm siding with liberty. I side it, with it's, liberty. It's, it's an amazing thing. I, I like. I'm not on campus. If I were on campus, I might. It might uh, be a yeah. different environment. But yeah, um, I, th I, people call it anti-Semitism. People are always <laughs> assholes. I mean, one way Some, or the other. Somebody so, in my rumble tab said a Jew named David. No way. <laughs> oh, what, what I love. My look, son's name is David. My son. I'm a Christian. John, uh, not to Wait, perpetuate the same any, origin, so. not to perpetuate any stereotypes. Do I, it. I studied. Do it. I studied law in Quebec City. So I went to from Montreal <laughs> to Quebec City. My He's dad. A Jewish lawyer. Jesus a Jewish Christ. Lawyer. The stereotypes I, just oh, write themselves at this point it's, it's getting it's getting better so i'm driving bye my bye. dad's car i'm driving my dad's car it's a mercedes 300e at the time i'm driving a girl back from class at the end of the day who is so naive and so ignorant to stereotypes she doesn't put together that david freiheit you know studying law from mm -hmm. west mount quebec might be a jew and we just start talking and at one point the person says she says you know like quebec city is very nice because we don't have any jews here didn't she didn't Shut piece together? I swear to you. And then and I was like, I I I, I want. I, she was a nice girl, a nice woman, and I knew that yeah. she was just repeating something that she heard somebody say down the line. And yeah. so then I invite yeah. her for dinner one day, and I start showing her family videos, and then I show her a video of uh, the circumcision of my nephew. <laughs> So halfway shoes, she's like, bro, oh, you oh. showing that video to anybody is a little alarming. Uh, you know, now that you mentioned it, uh, you didn't see, you didn't see anything. Like, hey, here's my nephew getting his dick chopped. I was like, ah. You, you didn't see anything in real time. Maybe but, the problem wasn't her, David. Maybe it wasn't. No, I'm just well, kidding. Well, no, and the circumcision debate is not one I've ever had yet. But no, the, 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 the. I don't know. I mean, I get the premise behind it. I do. I just feel, oh man, that's one of those, like it's, a, it's one of those age old things that we've just done. But I mean, I get it. There is no med. I'm, I'm gonna shut the hell up. I, let's no, not get sidetracked. Let's talk okay. about Roger Stone. Goddamn okay. it. Okay. So now, th th how the Roger Stone? I, no. I'm taking shit on the internet yesterday on Twitter, at least. Mostly to be from fair, the, mostly you're from making a bad faith argument right from the oh, get go, my man. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start this. Let's do so it. This go is, ahead. The joke, it started wait, wait, off by who's, saying... Who's going who's to judge? Who's, who's going to be... A, uh, we're not going to have a judge because your audience is going to be prevalent to you. Mine's going to be prevalent to I me. Don't so know, I don't man, feel like there's... We'll see. We'll see. We're, okay. We're, we're, well, okay we'll see. Fair I, enough. I, I, my crowd will tell me if they think I'm out in left field. The joke I, I, started that's, off... That's a good thing. Oh, yeah, I, I can respect any person that actually has an audience. I would hope that mine would do the same. 
but I can if respect you're, anybody you're, whose audience that they've crafted and developed, they follow you for a reason. So if they're willing to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, David, it's like, I disagree with you here. The fact that you can cultivate that type of following that feels like they can do that without you attacking them, that's a testament to you. Good oh, for you. It's good. It doesn't happen very often because more often than not, I'm right. But I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, so the, and the joke, there it went. Vote the, for Burke. I didn't say that. He did. Vote for the me. The joke nah. started off yesterday where it mm -hmm. was, I was saying that the DeSantis supporters, I don't know if I find them particularly obnoxious on social media. I mm -hmm. know people do. Then the question is whether or not I'm just not as aware of the obnoxiousness of Trump, team Trump mm -hmm. on, on the internet. And I said, okay. that, uh, be that as it may, whenever I see a misrepresentation or some sort of MSM talking yeah. point, I go click on a, on a, on a profile and it's mm -hmm. hashtag team DeSantis. And I don't know why that is. We'll get into that in a second. I agree with you on that. Then someone said, uh, when I hear you uh, complain or criticize Roger Stone for calling Casey DeSantis a mm -hmm. quote, C-U-N-T, the word, uh, then, then uh, you know, I'll take you seriously. Then I'm like, holy shit, did, did Roger Stone actually call Casey DeSantis the C word? And so I'm Googling it, you know, and I, okay, fine. I come across the article, it says it was, a, it, was a, it was a tweet thread. Someone says, Casey DeSantis on the campaign trail. I've got kids, I've got kids and whatever. They're criticizing her for yeah. talking about her kids. Mm -hmm. Then Roger Stone replies with hashtag, see you next Tuesday, S-E-E, -E, letter U, next Tuesday. And I'm like, oh, so he didn't call her a C-U-N-T, he, humorously glibly replied to a tweet with see you next Tuesday. And then I hold say, on, hold on, yeah. hold on. You're misrepresenting. You're saying humorously. You cannot detect tone via text. I'll take it, I'll also, take it back. also uh, why did he delete it? I don't know that he deleted it. He did. Okay. But uh, the, first of all, I, I would have told him not to. What does see it, you next Tuesday mean? No, Oh no, we're going to get there in a second, but okay. so okay. I say, okay, so he didn't actually. Are you trying to take the lawyer approach and say, well, wait a minute, your honor. Now wait no, just no, no. a second. I'm, I'm he didn't say it. the actual C word. He just said an acronym. Well, no, 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 no. Because what I, the whole, okay. my whole point was why can't the, the, I'll say, I'm going to say team DeSantis. I'm not really picking on them, but why can't people represent Feel free, the bro. Accurate? I'm not one of those people that's going to defend DeSantis blindly. No, yes, I, they I, are. Look, they're, I have, they're, I've seen your criticisms of some of his supporters in regards to the J6, and I agree with you. I agree with you. So this so one, I said, you're like, not going to get one of those rebuttals from me. It's like, well, just just could do no wrong. It's like, no, I actually feel like some of his supporters are way off the mark on that thing. But at the same token, I'm not going to um, attribute those types of interactions to the leader of the movement, because even in your own post describing the, the word being used cunt, um, even some of your followers were calling some of these DeSantis people disagreeing with you cunts. Well, but I, I don't blame you for that. I don't, I don't blame you that. for that. I, there's two words in the English language I don't use. The C word is one of them, and the other one yeah. is the N, obviously. But now, yeah. so yeah. I say like, I say this. I don't Why think do I, cunt's as bad as the other one, though. No, it, is, it isn't. It isn't. Um, I think it's much worse only if you're referring to a woman, because if you, if you, yeah. like, you could refer to But then to in the, like the English context, that's like a term of endearment. Uh, yeah, well, I was... Which, that's that's one of the positionings that the Trump team tried taking. It's like, ah, it's a term. Kasim, or uh, R R what's his face? The dude from England that, um, he's a massive tree, blocked me on Twitter. But that's what he was trying to say. He's like, oh, he cunt. It's like, that's not what Roger Stone was well, saying. No, no, the, the, but the question is not what was Roger Stone saying or what did mm -hmm. he mean? The question is, what did he say? And when people run and put the C word in quotes as though he said it, it, mm -hmm. it lends one to believe he said the word. And now... Yeah. My question, my, the question, it has to be done, you know, verbally. Is there a moral difference between hashtag see you next Tuesday and calling someone uh, the C word? Are is you really difference? arguing? Are you really arguing this position? I'm arguing why? Okay. Why? Can't You're it? arguing the heightened, educated, but brother, no, you no, got to no, no, understand. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm arguing the accurate representation right. of fact. Okay. Now, okay. and and because it's, it's it's a logical <laughs> question. Is fair saying, enough. Fair enough. Is saying see you next Tuesday as offensive as calling someone the C word? Spelled of course out? not. No. Okay. But there's a reason that you don't do that. It'd be the same. It's akin to me saying you can go F yourself. What is the intent behind the message? It's the same message. It's but just that issue, I'm not going to say it. The issue was never assessing the intent. The issue mm -hmm. was assessing reality. And the when intent you can, is the reality. When you can, no, but what did he actually say? That is the reality. What was his meaning? That doesn't matter. When you yes, quote someone, does. no, no, because Freak, when you quote someone, come no, on. John, first of all, I'm okay. gonna, I'm, no, already, I think you already, shut up. I'm sorry. no, 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 no. you've already conceded the, the major point, but when you oh, direct, when you direct quote someone, Mm -hmm. One would expect that the direct quote oh, that you've attributed okay. to them is the direct quote. The whole point but is you're, you're trying to make the argument of that he didn't actually say it, but I'm making the argument of, and I agree with you, he didn't actually say it, but the intent of the messaging was he was calling her a cunt. Yes, you can go now, to dictionary.com and look that up, and it's oh, yeah, literally sure, there in the sure. slang. Yeah, okay. Absolutely, but the question is this. So what are we what, disagreeing on? 
I, I'd say nothing because you've made the biggest concession. <laughs> Once you can see that see you next Tuesday is obviously less offensive. It is. When you then falsely attribute him having did used I say the that? more offensive word. Yeah, I think you did. Oh, okay. Well, I'm saying though, like if you see that word, if you see it spelled out in that manner, is it the same? No, I wouldn't say it's the same. Does it have the same meaning? If say, for example, the N word that you won't say, but I spelled it differently and used it, is it well, just as equally as offensive? Would you use that same word? Well, first of all, never. And if I were to say N word. Why not? Then, it's not the same thing. You just no, no, said, you you conceded, you conceded. It's not the same by your own logic. No, no, well, no, no, no. One, is, one is worse than the other in, in my view. But if I were to say the N word. Thank and then someone, you. So no, even if you misspell it. In no, 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 but hold on. Okay. No, but if, if, if I were to say the N word. I'm sorry if I'm talking over you. I don't apologize. worry. If I were to have said the N word, uh, even to say. I'm not accusing you of saying that. No, 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 no. And then someone quotes me as having said it. Well, I'm going to damn well have a problem with them. The whole issue here, okay. I, the, okay. the, the, the debate started off with why can't they just, why do they have to spin, why do I have to fact check whether or not Roger Stone actually called her a, a C-U-N-T? I can't trust anything they say. So I see that article. Oh, I see uh, someone okay, say. Okay, and I like, no, okay, no, no, I, I see your method. But so I mean, I, bro, and you're going to get the, that from any side. You're, I mean, I get the same thing. I mean, come on, man. You're talking about the, the people, and I see the person that you quoted. He's got how many followers? These are not prophylactic. Well, I don't these know. Are, I, got, I got into someone with Max. I don't know who Max Nordstrom or Max. They're Hold actually, on. there's a lot of these people, dude, honestly, if you know them, it's like, I'll put it this way. The Roger Stone, the thing that I have a problem with is that number one, what he said was just kind of like, if this is the, the level that we're going to go to in our political landscape, which honestly, a lot of people that don't know history, this is not the worst it's ever been. We had presidents yet yeah, literally having duels back in the olden days. They would literally shoot each other. So it's like, it hasn't hit that point yet. It's like, but what I feel though with Roger Stone, if you look at the personality scope of who he is, he even called Ivanka Trump, or excuse me, um, Trump's daughter. Um, yeah, not Ivanka. Oh my God. Uh, what's her face? It's uh, memory hole. He called her an abortionist bitch. He literally said that. And it's just kind of like, this is well within the scope of the personality of who Roger Stone is. Now, if you take that by itself, that's someone that Trump keeps close to him. If there were somebody like that with Ron DeSantis, and I'm going to ask you, is there somebody akin to Roger Stone in the DeSantis camp that you find has equal representation in regards to being offensive? Uh, let, me, let me pause to think about that. But okay. I also do want, enough, to come, I do want to come back <laughs> and say, once, once we've conceded that, See you next Tuesday. A hired member, though. A is, hired member, not yeah, yeah. a random follower. Okay. But I, but I just, I, I do feel vindicated <clears throat> because once, once we've conceded that see you next Tuesday is obviously less offensive than the actual word, and then when you falsely attribute the actual word, you're doing it specifically because it's more offensive, and there's a material dis difference there in but terms of arguing, me trusting what you could say. But fair that, enough. But I mean, well, I mean, you can't trust what anybody says on the internet, so it kind of this, proves your point there to be a fault of your own. Why would you trust what anybody has to say? Well, Go look it up for yourself. I, yeah, but either yeah, way, the other point is, you know, Stone said that for a reason. And it got a response. And it also got, and also, here's the other thing. If it's not as offensive, why did major news outlets cover it? Oh, well, they'll, first of all, they just, they'll, they'll cover, they will cover They're anything. Not, it, uh, yeah, all, you're right. Okay, fair enough. Oh, yeah, no, okay, yeah. Like, I'm, 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 yeah, 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 The whole point is, I'm not saying it wasn't offensive. I'm not saying he didn't okay. mean it. Okay, okay. I was saying, why can't you just tell me what he actually said without... So including... then you you do consider that to be offensive? Oh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, well, Roger, Roger, Roger Stone, it, I, I was trying to look up, what did he call the uh, Clinton? He made a joke about a Clinton super PAC and he called it, it, it I think it was the C word back in the day. Ooh, the oh, yeah. I mean, this, this, is, this is well this. within his realm. This is what Roger Stone does. And if, you know, forget politics. Roger Stone is a relic of an age old time where he has other people do the fighting for him. I'm the type of guy like, if you want to throw bones and you've, you've met me, I'm like six, three, 225 pounds. It's like, if you want to say something, say it to my face. And I'd rather have a discussion. I don't want to punch people. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, there's some people like, I'd love to just clock that son of a bitch. Roger Stone is one of those guys that he's smart enough that he can whip people up. Uh, emotionally to do the fighting for him, as will a lot of these other influencers, regardless of which political side of the aisle they're on. They stir people. I, I've seen you going hard after Ray Epps. Uh, bro, I'm right there with you. I don't understand why Ann Coulter is suddenly trying to vindicate Ray Epps. Like, no, that, Ray Epps, is, based upon sentencing, that dude's a fan. And so is Nick Fuentes. <laughs> Fuentes told people to go in the building no sentencing. None. I You're am a fucking I am, fed. I'm by the way, I'm not defending Nick Fuentes and no, I'm I not know, avoiding him. I am ap I'm just not familiar. I know people have said that and I don't I You're just, better off staying away. You're you're but, um, he's he's a cancer. He's a well, cancer. And Ann Coulter, this is another like this is where it all started. Ann Coulter yeah. comes inexplicably says this has been explained a million times. Ray Epps is just a, a poor schmuck. And then the next day she says only DeSantis can uh, fix this, talking about the immigration uh, stuff. Uh, why? why? But, <laughs> 
John, you're gonna you're gonna tell me. I have I I Ray up to some poor schmuck. The video is like we're going into the Capitol tomorrow. It's like Chris Farley. We're gonna live in no, a but, van. But but John John, she then said in the same tweet, yeah. he was I telling saw it. I saw, yeah. people not to go in. I'm like, why are you lying like this? And then the next day you that's, come that's up the question. DeSantis. That's the question right there, David. You have to ask, what is she gaining out of this? Ann Coulter's not a grifter. She was one of the first people that went after Trump, and she was one of Trump's biggest proponents. Yeah. And then she reversed course, and even I was kind of like, what the hell? And then later on, I was like, okay, I get it now. Maybe she saw it sooner than me. I don't know. Um, and, you know, I don't... I need to know what, one, the, let me, what let me, the it is. Donald but, Trump. Sorry, go, go. I don't think Trump's a racist. I don't think Trump is anti-Semitic. I don't think Trump is... Do I think he's a womanizer? Absolutely, I do. By his own words, he admitted this. But I don't vote for a politician based upon their stances uh, in regards to like evangelical viewpoints. I don't, I believe in a separation of church and state. I don't want religious fundamentalism guiding any policy. I believe in liberty for all and everyone should worship accordingly and everybody should just leave them the hell alone. But with Donald Trump, he tries to appeal to the evangelical crowd. And in fact, that video he just shared not too long ago about like why God made Trump, which was something that one of the Dilly Mean team made um, supporting Trump. And then all the evangelicals are like, uh, this is sacrilege. Like this is blasphemous. So I don't think Donald Trump really is a Christian. Do I care? No, not really. Cause I think all these snakes in Washington's like, they, come on, man. They, they, I don't believe they have true, but even if they did, I don't care. I believe live and let live. I, I just, that's well, yeah. so let's, let's, let's back, I mean, back it up. Cause we're going to get back to Roger Stone, um, yes. Roger no, Stone. no, forget Roger. We're done with Roger, Roger okay. Stone. I, I just think it shouldn't have been said, but I mean, eh, whatever. No, but my, my only issue with it is it, it is a material distinction to use the actual C word versus C next Tuesday. One, he might think it's funny. It's it's the PG thirteen way, and just to impute yeah, the word is wrong. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's so that's good. Okay, okay. so now, no, we can so, agree on that. I could say it's it's not necessarily as of offensive by not saying the actual word. But the employment, the implication of it still is the same. No, for sure. But then it's okay. the question of it's obviously not as offensive. And then to directly impute the more offensive. Wait, whoa, term, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So you're arguing. Let me, let me directly quote, let me, I should say. Okay. So let me just clarify quote. where your stance is. You're saying by not using the actual word and using an acronym, it's less offensive. But well, by definition. By def well. Where's the definition for that? The, the, the definition is that we've already conceded that using the word. No, 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 no. Now, by acronym. definition, you're saying yours. Yours is an opinion. This is all. This is all. Uh, you know, my only issue is everybody. I think most people will agree. The term, mm -hmm. the C word is much more offensive than C and X Tuesday, which is still offensive. And the I reason think, why they uh, have to no, misquote. Okay. I them, think I think that's subjective. Yeah. I think that's subjective, quite honestly. Now, that, other, would you I say think, that's a fair concession? Uh, no, because I think, uh, I think you be, don't I, think, okay. No, okay. No, well, I, I, think, say, I think us even having this argument proves my point of saying it's a subjective matter. Well, no, I can't going to think, I, I, I'm sorry. I, but objective metrics, see you next Tuesday would not be stricken from a, a television show. Cunt would be. And, the, and but so, now you're trying to take it and put it in the manner of television. Television. Well, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find some, obje some objective metric. I think yeah, most, but people television, most people would, most people would, most people would agree. This way. Let's do this. Effort, right? oh, David, yeah. David, let's do this. Would you be okay with your son writing that word in any manner? No. Why? Because it is offensive. Thank you. Okay. But the question is this. I wouldn't want him saying MF or I, I wouldn't want him saying MF or either. But We're not said, talking about MF or Roger Stone didn't say MF or no, he no, said no, but, punt. Or no, he no, said no, see you next Tuesday. But he, there, so the, all it says, there's the only reason to lie about what him. he said. I got him. <laughs> no, the only reason to lie about what he actually said is because you want to make him use the word that you acknowledge is more offensive, even if he meant it. That was all. I just want accuracy. That's all I want. You know, um, I think, and I agree, I agree I, mm, man, I think that's subjective. But what you're describing here, I saw the same issue with Austin Peterson. I think, I wouldn't say a problem. I would just say that you both operate in a very... Um, not odd in a bad way, a different mental capacity that it is more nuanced and requires much more explaining than just a Twitter thread. No, you actually have to sit problem. down and peel back the layers of what your intent is. I, I see where you're coming from. Do I think this even bears a discussion? No, I don't. No, I think I, it's. I think oh, we're in the weeds over something that's immaterial. Absolutely. But, but you do pose some very good. I think we borderline to like philosophical at this point. It's like, ah, oh, well, who well, is it, David? Who no, is, but it is like, It's accuracy in direct quoting, and if you're and if you deliberately choose to, okay, in, in, so in I, accurately I, okay. direct quote, 
there's a reason for it. The reason is because by the, the more the headliner right. was much more offensive. Hey, some people might actually laugh if he says Roger Stone says see you next Tuesday. Nobody's gonna laugh if he says Roger Stone calls Casey DeSantis a C U N T. As but a the intent, quote. well, nobody was laughing because that's actually what he said, and people were still equally as offended, which I proves your so, point think, a little well, wrong. So, some were offended. I, what, what, I what think there was a lot case. of people offended. No, by I it. know. Even but, I was kind of like, "Damn, dude!" No, no, like, but that's, what, that's... What, what, what bothers me even more is that some people come out and say she is, and like that's. I mean, for goodness sake, yeah, I, I don't, I don't yeah, know her personally you know, from a hole in the wall, but that. You know, well, they you... seem like. Here's the thing, though. I, I, they seem like very nice people. And, you know, I feel bad for Melania. Like, I, I think that that woman's been put through the hoops and the yeah. ringer. Like, I well, don't know. You imagine, like, for all that she's dealt with in her uh, career, this was worse. I mean, that's well, that the presidency that's going to take an impact on you, whether you know which, where, wherever you see her politically aligning with Trump or again, it doesn't matter. The fact that I mean, look at the aging of presidents. You see Bush before he goes into office, Obama before Trump, and then they go through. Excuse me, four years for Trump, eight years for Obama and Bush, and you see the aging process due to the. Uh, the amount of stress that you're you're no, undergoing. Shout out shellshockcbd.com. By the way, I want to talk to you about sponsorship. No, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. Uh, I, I would totally off topic. After the show, I want to talk to you about sponsorship opportunities because I we, I own a company and we're looking for, um, we're going to be running ads through Twitter and stuff like that, which they just it, blessed off on. Is it an energy drink? No, shellshockcbd.com. Oh, mar marijuana. CBD. Stuff. Oh no! Well, Dude. kind of. <laughs> Dude, you know, let me just, oh, oh, PSA: kind of. Nobody wants to see me on marijuana. That would. <laughs> Bro, I would love to see you. No, no, no. So here's the difference, though. Like, uh, okay, so we have CBD. CBD is not marijuana. It's totally different. And you know, a lot of people they don't understand the differences there. CBD is more it for relaxation. It doesn't have the THC. It doesn't, it doesn't have, have the well. Some versions of it do, but it's 0.3 percent, and you're not going to get high from that. It opens up the conduits in your brain. But then we also do have delta eight, delta nine, which will get you baked out of your gourd. So it's completely legal. Oh so, my but no, I wanted to see what your rates would be because I would be interested in running some deals. We'll, on your show. we'll talk afterwards. There's some yeah, stuff that, I, as a matter of principle, if I don't, if I would never use it that's myself, fair. that is, I will send um, you the stuff for free. All of our money comes, all of our product comes 100 percent. You're going to you're you're send me the stuff for free, and then you're going to read florida man goes dancing with alligators and never comes back gonna <laughs> that will be the greatest advertisement i could possibly <laughs> use i will pay you for that i will pay you for that <laughs> um now hold on so go back to ann coulter you said she saw yeah. it before you what do you think is the it that she saw in trump and actually i i would even Oof, want to go back yeah. because i need to understand those who say they voted for trump twice but won't do it now yeah. Although I, I hope that they would actually change their mind if he was the only, if he's the candidate, but set that I'm aside. I'm afraid I can't agree with you on that one. I'll explain my positioning on that. But well, So you, have to, you voted for him twice. You voted yeah. for him twice, meaning you voted for him despite the grab him by the pussy. You voted for him yeah, despite yeah. they're not sending our best. You voted for him but despite all of the accusations. So tell what, yeah. what, what it has to be something that you can recall. What, well, first of all, I, I don't appreciate you associating me with those that said they're not sending our best. That I never took that positioning. I knew who he was talking about on that one. Mm -hmm. So how dare you, David? How dare you? You probably subscribe to the fine people mm -hmm. hoax too there, John. I, I, <laughs> I know you DeSantis types. I'm joking and I'm joking. Okay. No, no, no. Because even, bro, I saw the speech. I, I, saw, I saw a lot of the stuff. Look, I don't come at Trump from the liberal leftist position of saying, oh, Republicans are racist, they're xenophobic. I will be the first one to say, I don't see Trump as being racist. I don't see Trump as being anti-Semitic. I certainly don't see him as being xenophobic. Trump, as far as the Muslim ban that CNN went after him for, that was under Obama. And I agree with Obama for doing it. I agree with Donald Trump for carrying it on. So Trump's not a xenophobe. The thing that lost me with Trump is number one, I think, you know, we he, he does he has a very good positioning. It's brilliantly done. Trump, if you look at his policies, is a Clinton era Democrat. It took me a while to wake up because, you know, when I entered into the political realm, I had to do a lot of learning. I'm still doing a lot of learning. I'm, I'm doing a lot of catching up of things I wasn't paying attention to during my younger, younger years, which I'm, I'm looking in and reading about now. But what I've seen from Trump is, number one, let's talk about the fundamental pillars of, and where, where do you align politically? Where, where do you, where do you I, say you stand? Uh, despite people thinking that I'm pro-Trump, I'm not pro-anybody. Right now- What are you? Yeah. Well, right who, now, are, who, is, who is David? Who is David I, I'd, say, I'd say I'm a constitutionalist as well under the Canadian Charter that. of Rights, but we don't care about our constitution there. Yeah. I, I say, say well, I'm, a same in America. Yeah. I'm a constitutionalist American born in a, in a liberal Canadian's body. What would you say is the difference? Okay, so you just quoted, and forgive me for not knowing a lot about Canada politics, I've been I've been learning more about English because I do love the English monarchy in a sense of like studying it in the parliament. But as far as the Canadian Bill of Rights, how what was it called? We, we have the we have a constitution. It was the Constitution mm -hmm. of 1867, which basically okay. governed um, 
it governed it governed the the provinces and the and the federal okay okay in 1982 we incorporated That's a charter recent. of rights yeah no no so we had we had no okay. charter of rights until recently so it's like uh, our amendments our bill of rights well it, our our charter of rights is basically uh you know except for the second amendment the constitution you know you have your freedom okay. of speech freedom okay. of religion freedom of association why do you think mobility. it took so long to get to that point where you actually have to elaborate and detail we had it we had it basically on i want to say unwritten but i don't want to make a mistake it was in there somewhere, but they wanted to formalize our okay. charter of rights. Okay, fair enough. No, no, uh, fair enough. They're okay. not Ratify worth, in a sense. They're not worth <clears throat> anything. We, we, the, yeah. the, the preamble says, you know, these rights of you know, the name of God. Basically, it invokes God. Yeah. And then it says, the, the first section says, all of these rights are, you know, your rights, except in as much as can be, uh, cons uh, what is it, infringed uh, under the principles of a free and democratic society. So you got all these rights. Sounds like the fine print. Well, it's it's it's, it's right yeah. up on the bat, right up on the yeah, front there. It's like man. these are your rights, except yeah. in as much as we can infringe upon them, in accordance <laughs> with the rules of a free and democratic society, yeah. which basically <laughs> means virus, you're locked down, you're mm -hmm. you're you're everything. So I, I think Trudeau should have been guillotined for what he did to the truckers. I cannot possibly let you say that without. I'm going to go straight to jail the next time I come back. Politically guillotine people. He means politically, politically metaphorically, figuratively. Uh, I'm not saying literal. Just so nobody thinks that that's a call to. I mean, I, the, the world is the world is that crazy. He should have been. He should have. Oh, he should be brought up on charges. I, I, oh my God. He should be brought it's, it, it, it's, to it's sit atrocious. there and see what he did to those people. It's like you've locked them down illegally. By the way, that's where I also disagree with Donald Trump on. You talk about where I, where Trump lost me. Number yeah. one, that's why I asked you where you stood politically, because we have to have some common ground here that we can both agree upon. And that's why I asked as far as constitutionality. I believe the Second Amendment, and I'm not one of these Second Amendment types like, oh, just guns and freedom and titties and bacon. Woo -hoo! I genuinely believe the Second Amendment is such a fundamental and critical right of a free people to have, because I sincerely do not believe America went to the level of, say, Australia for the COVID camps, the, the things similar, because of the Second Amendment. I think the Second Amendment is a massive, um, a massive uh, dissuasion for government entities to overstep at such an astronomical level. I think if anywhere in America they would have tried to open up a COVID internment camp, there would have been shooting. I mean, David, when I say Governor, we were well, this close. No, I, I, I agree with you. And, and, and this will uh, give you some of my, uh, call it political metamorphosis. No, yeah, Canadian, born and raised. We've never had a Second Amendment. We've never had yeah. Second Amendment rights growing up. I, so I wait, so so how do you own guns there? Like, so, you, you, so you, you have no. You don't. Like, what, what really? You, None. I, I, Not even I did, for hunting? I did my fire. Well, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I did my firearm license. Uh, mm -hmm. Long arms. You could have unrestricted long arms. Uh, rifles? rifles? Yeah, right, rifles. Okay. Now, yeah, even the rifles yeah. are wildly restricted. You can't have it for the purposes of self-defense. You can't you How can they even prove home. that? Well, because you can't keep the uh, ammunition Oh, you can't keep it at fire. home? No, no, you Where can't the hell keep do you keep it? No, no, you can't keep the ammunition stored with the firearm at home. So they both have to be okay. in separate locations, locked up. Um, wait, wait, location is in locations within the house within or the different house for ammunition for the for oh, okay, okay 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 it's, 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 i don't it's, agree it's, with it but it's like okay it's okay. logical i could i could operate around that yeah. yeah and you have to keep your you have to keep a trigger uh trigger lock on your lock, rifle. Yeah. yeah um the rifles can only have a maximum of five rounds per magazine or five rounds. they can only carry a max of five rounds so Jesus. I, and, and you cannot at this point in, in canadian history you cannot own a small arm it's a restricted firearm for self-defense mm. period and growing up, it's like, okay, well, you know, it makes sense. We don't want to have as, we don't have the gun violence we have in the States. Uh, you, you, you only need such a yeah. powerful gun for, for hunting. And, and then at, at some yeah. point, it's like, okay, well, I, now I appreciate the value of the Second Amendment, but I can yeah. understand the high-capacity magazine argument. And now I understand well, that Well, let me, you, let me you push pause negotiate. on that one, then. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm glad to hear your evolution going that far, because for a lot of people, it only goes to like maybe halfway and they stop there and they stop the learning. And it's the understanding the high capacity magazines and stuff like that. Let's use America. Let's use America as the example. We have roughly 350 million citizens living in America currently, and we can go back and forth on whether that's correct or not. We have over 320 million guns in circulation. The idea of banning guns in America is not even pragmatic. It's, it's not even it's possible. That, well, that's the issue. It's a, it's a non-starter. <clears throat> it's a non-starter. But at the same time, though, if America had, we talk about in states like Texas, bro, I can get anything I want. If I want to get a suppressor, I can use black market means I can get a suppressor. I can get certain kinds. I can get whatever I want. That's why I argue against a lot of these bans. They don't work. 
they never, the war on drugs does. I, I believe in legalizing drugs. I think Rand Paul had a great briefing. He said, if we legalize crack cocaine tomorrow, how many are you going to go smoke it? Nobody raised their hands. Why? Because you know the educated um, negative effects of cocaine. But if you want to use it, well, half of you probably already are using cocaine or smoking crack. Who cares? I just don't want to pay for it. But anyway, that's a totally different topic. But the point that I'm trying to make, though, is if America had a gun violence problem, to the magnitude that, say, for example, like the English like quoting, it's like America's got a gun violence problem. We actually don't. It's it's horrible to have gun crime. <clears throat> I don't agree with it. I hate it. Do I want guns in the hands of mentally deranged people? No. But the only way to prevent that from happening is, well, number one, you can't. So secondly, I've got to defend myself. So if that mental mentally deranged lunatic is going to own a firearm, I cannot illegally, might I add, illegally, we'll just say he's a convicted felon, can't own a firearm, but he gets his hands on one. How do I defend myself against the criminal well, by this, abiding by the law? This is, what, <clears throat> by the way, and in Canada, it's not that we don't have gun violence. Let's just say it's a third of the rate in America. Mm -hmm. It's all committed with- It's not even in the top 10 in America. Let's be clear. It's not even the top 10 killer of Americans. Uh, you know gun, gun violence. Gun violence. Yeah, well, go, I mean, if you, if you exclude suicide, which they want to include all the time, it's 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 a wildly yeah. lower number than most people. Why is appreciate. that, brother? Why is that? Oh no, not just that. And then if you and then if you, yep. if you go by regions and and other other. Um, and breakdowns. Texas gun violence isn't nearly as bad as you think it would be when you have an entire population literally are or figuratively well, armed to the teeth. Well, and this is so the argument like when we <clears> grew up, they say, okay, well, if you need it for self defense, you don't need. Uh, uh, high capacity magazines. How many people are attacking you? It's sort of like that Jim Jeffries. The government. Thing. What does the government have? Okay. Like, take this argument to the Taliban. They just whooped our ass for 20 that, fucking years. What did they is, have? PKMs and flip flops. And, apps, and, and that is what <laughs> Canadians don't understand. And that's what people, that's what my understanding of the history of the Second Amendment has yeah. changed my entire perspective on that. That and I'm so happy to hear that. No, I'm so that, happy to hear that, brother. And negotiating, I don't want to say negotiating with liberals, but negotiating with Democrats where mm. you understand. The end goal is the end goal. And any negotiation in the meantime, mean? they want all of the guns, period. I mean, oh, yeah. That, that, that well, I understand. Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, man, you see, I don't know. The older I get, I actually have a lot of Democrat friends that are proponents of the Second Amendment. They're no longer, but they're, they're no longer Democrats by that point, by but the standards see, but, of but By whose definition? But yeah, but whose standard? Who dictates the standard? This is what I'm trying to say. Is like, I feel like the press has done such an amazing job at drawing these political battle lines when in fact they're very inaccurate. There's a lot of Democrats that are proponents of the Second Amendment, which, brother... I wouldn't think that either. I was like, wait a minute, what? It's like, no, there's a lot of debt because who do you see in the news attacking? It's the Feinsteins, it's the Pelosi's, it's the Swalwells, but you don't see a lot of Democrat ground voters. Like I've talked to a lot of them here in Texas, like, no, we actually agree with the Second Amendment. It's like, that's why I'm saying horseshoe theory. We agree with like 95% of the same things. It's just like abortion and the 2A in certain circumstances. We have big disagreements on, but relatively speaking, we agree on a lot more than we realize, but I, we're well, kept that, divided for a reason. This is possibly true, and it might be the no truth. Oh, it's very true, theory. Free. I might not be wrong, or I might not be right, but by God, I'm never wrong. <laughs> well, is that, that sounds like it's got to be from The Simpsons, if I'm not mistaken. No, I actually, that was uh, it was a saying my old uh, sergeant in the army used to tell and teach me. He's like, it's like, I might not be right, but by God, I'm never fucking wrong. It's like, Roger, that's aren't. <laughs> no, sir. And so you say like the argument was, well, if you need it for self-defense, you don't need a 10 capacity, whatever, high capacity magazines. And then yeah. people don't understand it's intended to protect against a tyrannical government. And then, the argument, then, then you're going to get a swallow argument. Well, we've got we've got nukes and we've got jets. And then you, you know, get to your I, argument. I'm glad. I'm glad he utilized that because it's like, OK, you do have nukes, but you can't use them. Why, bro? You're going to nuke a town. In that town, like, when people talk civil war, look at Guatemala, by the way, or Ecuador right now. They're in the midst of a civil war. You don't know who's good and who's bad. It's not like the rebels are out there, like on the rebel side. It's like, you know, Don, the freaking rebel gear while we have the Death Star. It's like, there's no, there's no uniforms. What? It's literally door door fighting. You don't know who the fucking enemy is. It's well, like the underground this... French resistance in World War II. You don't know who these people are. You, you saw the video of the armed gunmen taking over a media outlet. And, and I, I don't know the context and not, I'm not trying to pull the context. Oh, yeah. I'm reading, yeah. the, I'm reading the chat. Half of the people are saying, this is America if we don't uh, protect ourselves. The other half are saying, I hope I ho is that the CNN of Ecuador? Like some are saying this is terrible. Both of them are saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I don't know what the hell's going it's on. It's an extreme on either end. The way you look at it, it's just kind of like, is this really what you, I am not for civil war. I, I am not. I, I, what worries me though, brother, and I mean this in all sincerity, is that we are in very dangerous waters right now. When I saw, um, and again, I'm not voting for Trump. But when I saw them trying to remove him from the ballot in Colorado, 
which I knew that wasn't going to stand. The SCOTUS is going to overturn that in a heartbeat, as they should, which you're welcome for having conservatives on there because they're actually going to hold true to the Constitution. The Democrats be like, yeah, he's racist. Get him off of it. So, but when you see what Colorado attempted to do, and then 16 other states, to include Texas, these were lawsuits brought against um, the states to say, we want this person off the ballot. Brother, we are in dangerous waters. Now, realistically, any any lawyer, I'm sure you can attest to this, saying like this has no no grounds. This will get overturned. Um, no, it, this is it, just, it, it's, it's lawfare. It, it has to. The only question is, you know, yeah. the, the Supreme Court's going to do it sooner than later, hopefully. Well, I mean, no, they reinstated gonna... him on the, on the, the ballot in well, Colorado. Well, they, they, they never even retracted. removed him. They, they, yeah, you know, they yeah, yeah. their own stupid opinions. Because it's, but... it's lawfare, brother. It's lawfare. They're trying to make these headlines say we're fighting Trump. So when I come against Trump, it's not from that side. Like, I don't, I don't agree with removing political opposition. I don't. Well, now hold on. Like, we got <clears throat> we got to go all the way to the back to the beginning. Now, what was the, what's the element? What's the what was the ultimate turnoff? And I'm going to get to whether or not you're. Actually I already know where you're Trump. going with this, and you're going to find that I probably agree with you. Okay. Well, yeah. So what what, what was what? what Lead me down the path. Lead me down. No, the no, path. no, no, no. What what was it? When was the moment you said I'm done with Trump? Oh, I thought you were talking about why they're moving from the ballot. It's like no, the whole insurrection it. thing. And I actually saw your tweets about that. And I agree with it. I don't. I. <laughs> My mind is not 100% made up as to whether or not that was an insurrection. Part of me was like, that was just a riot that went awry. But then when you listen to the footage and you listen to the audio and you say, we're here to hang congressmen, yada, yada, yada. The, the, the intent behind an insurrection is to, to prevent a government from functioning, whatever the case may be. Now, the counting of the electoral votes is symbolic in nature. They already had the votes. They knew, but it's symbolic. Did they actually stop anything? No, it was already predetermined. It was like, we've well, already I, got the, the votes the, here. I, my argument is they didn't, they, they didn't want to stop anything in the first place. They just wanted to ensure yeah. it was done properly. Well, I but, saw your response to Justin, what's his face, as Justin far as Hart. like, oh, yeah, yeah another, another I disagree one today. with him. I disagree with him on that one, that it talked about how like, you know, he felt like there was a lot of Trump people that went there with the intent. To go like, to brother, war. If you've actually been in a crowd and you understand crowd behavior, I've seen this in protests. I've seen this. like I've been on the receiving end of these, like in the military. We dealt with this a lot in Iraq with the protests. And we call these people the crowd instigators, the rabble rousers. And you have snatch teams that go out there and pull these guys out of there because they're going to they're gonna the crowd doing some very dangerous things. It's one thing to protest, which and that's why I don't blame Trump for January 6th. I think he was stupid that he told them to go down there because now you're putting gasoline next to um, fire. It's like, why are you doing that? Um, but I, I think he was stupid in doing that, but did he actually go down there in any legal capacity say, go do this? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't I, even imply it. He I, was being I, figured it would fight like hell. It's like, come on. No, Ted Cruz said I, 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 I know. And I love the montage of Democrats saying that I, I, I do take the uh, other position. Well, it it's interesting it, though. It's interesting how some of the DeSantis supporters who I know who you're talking about have taken that positioning now because they don't like Trump. And it's like, that's where I disagree with a lot of DeSantis supporters. It's like, I don't agree that Trump was intending to do this. And I don't think a lot of Trump supporters intended to do that either. But I do know crowd behavior takes on its own identity. No, when you sure. are in it's that, you feel it's the same in a football game. When you go to a stadium, you're doing like, oh, like it's it's an experience. It's an experience. No, when you well, got the Ray Epps. Ab well, that was just about to say that. It's like, <clears throat> it takes on its own force, especially yeah. when you have someone guiding the water, the, the floodwaters. I, yeah, I, would, yeah, I, would take yeah. it, I would say I do believe it was an insurrection committed by the state against the people because what they've done with that 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 day now mm. is undermine democracy and basically criminalize. They've criminalized the Constitution. Yeah, yeah, I, I can agree with you in a certain aspect of that because, uh, you know, I actually had Congressman Crenshaw on the show and I don't agree with Dan's politics. I, I've made him very aware of this. Like, I don't understand where he comes from as far as the red flag laws. Um, but I think a lot of it was he was doing it with the intent of trying to understand the left and rationalize. You can't do that. You can't do that when it comes to the Second Amendment with liberals. So <clears throat> what I saw with that, though, and Crenshaw's got a military background as well. He's a SEAL. And it's like the rally was planned for months. We knew about this for months. There was a Stop the Steal rally, which, by the way, we still don't know where those millions of dollars went to that Trump collected for the whole Stop the Steal, Ali Alexander, pedophile extraordinaire, who hobnobs the likes of uh, Roger Stone, might I add. These people just went AWOL. The money, poof, gone. It's like, interesting. That's weird. But when I saw that, Pelosi did not have security heightened. The FBI, for, and I, I believe in abolishing the FBI. I believe abolishing the ATF, FBI, CIA, IRS. Get rid of them. We don't need them. But when you have months of planning for a rally that's going to have purportedly millions of people attending, your security hits are going to be going through the fucking roof. You're going to have to have heightened security everywhere. Pelosi didn't. She set a trap. Trump walked right into it. So it's like, yes, I agree with you. 
They weaponized January 6th. They set a trap. Trump was too stupid to see that. And he sent supporters down there and they did it anyway. So it's like, do I think Trump meant for that? No. But as a tactician, I feel like that man is an idiot. It's like, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, Anyone I, with a I, sense of common sense, like, do not put that flame, that open flame next to that gasoline. Nothing good's going to come of this. Well, I mean, and, and you had Alex Jones the day of saying, don't go down there. It's a trap. Yes, he was um, literally pushing people away saying, I, res- I don't like Alex Jones's content. I think it's a little bland for me, but I respect the man for at least saying, like, don't go in. Just doing his eye. I made him sound like the whole Bobby Boucher. I get my Bobby Boucher. But but turn the frog. Okay, that guy. That's so a little I, bit. I, that, that, that was better. <laughs> Did you know he was a PL in Vietnam? A, a platoon leader in Vietnam. A platoon leader. He was a lieutenant Alex- in Vietnam. Who Not Alex it? Jones, the Bobby the, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. the 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 actual guy from the movie The yeah. Waterboy. He came oh, to see us that. in Iraq in 2003 as a USO show. The Drew Carey group came out and he was one of them. Didn't know that. He was a platoon leader in Vietnam, which is is, um, is he the one and I'm not saying this to be funny. He's the one with the with the eyes that the one eye is off in all of the Adam Sandler movies? I there's, there's one. I know which cons- character you're talking about. I'm talking about the dude that was the assistant coach, the overweight dude. It's, I get my okay. Bobby Boucher. That, there was that him. Okay. I'm but the, the life, the life expectancy of a platoon leader in Vietnam was like 30 minutes because they they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. <clears throat> it's crazy. Okay, now but hold anyway. on. Bring, bringing it back. That, yeah. that surely was I not the I go off on these tangents, dude. I'm sorry. I'm, I, just, I love these the discussions. Moment. Don't worry. About First of all, I, I actually, I love it too. And I can, so long as I don't have to take a pee break, I'm going to be good. Uh, <laughs> when is that? That's not the moment that you lost Trump on. What's, no, what's the no, no, no. What's the definitive act? Oh, or, or man. I, I would have to say when I saw Trump really go after the Second Amendment, when Trump sided with the likes of, um, <clears throat> Number one, I wasn't paying attention half the time because I was too busy defending him from a stance of I've taken on that political persona as my own identity. When you do that, you're not paying attention. You're not as plugged in to what he's actually saying and more importantly, what he's actually doing. When I saw the CARES Act and you start doing some research on the CARES Act and the whole mail-in balloting fraud thing, he funded it. And I'm just kind of like, that's hindsight. But the Second Amendment is what lost me. When I saw him siding with the likes of Feinstein and the red flag laws, I was, I was at a loss, David. I was at a loss. Like how, how, what? Like, no, no, absolutely not. Now, you know, it didn't happen instantaneously because when I was doing my podcast at that time, I actually defended him for it. My positioning was, well, we don't really need bump stocks. I was in denial and I was bargaining. I was bargaining in a sense of like the whole classic signs of, um, what do you call it? Uh, depression or, uh, what is denial. it? Denial. Denial. Well, no, that's one of the symptoms. Is it denial? Uh, the bargaining, the acceptance, uh, the, well, is that's that, is that the coming to grips with the grief, yeah. the seventh stage, ninth stage of grief, whatever it is. I was in one of those stages. So I'm just sitting there. I was like, do we really need a bump stock? And then I was turned on to a gentleman who I really think you should have on the show. If you don't know him already, Austin Peterson. I, th- I'm going to Google the face. Cause I need, to you need to, to follow name. Austin. Pe- now Austin and I do not agree on some things as well, but Austin comes on the show and I love having debates with him much like you. It's like, it's you can at least have good faith discussions with a lot of these people. And Austin's one of them. He's a, he's a, he ran for president as a libertarian in 2016. Unfortunately, he lost. That's why, because libertarians, they never win anything because they're so pragmatic about their viewpoints. Or well, rather also, they, vice they, versa. They, they put out some tweets that would turn off. Oh, uh, Jesus, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, Austin schooled me on this. You know, I had him on the show and he debated me on it. He proved me wrong. And I actually can see he's like, actually, you changed my mind. I understand the premise. So he also turned me on to Milton Friedman, and I started doing some research on him, John Locke, the rest of them, and reading into the the premise of the Constitution, the meanings behind this, the principles of this, because I was fresh out of the Army. I'm young ho, fucking, oh, yeah, country Trump, yeah, fuck liberals. And then you start understanding constitutionality and the freedoms that come with it, the liberties provided for all people, a true freedom movement. And I, I don't say this in the sense of like, I want to slap this on a shirt and scream America like Graham Allen and reading the Bible with a gun over my shoulders. That's not what it's about. It encompasses that, but it's so much bigger. That's why I say I like to travel. I travel with the intent of going to places like Ireland and you see how the government works. You see how the tax system is set up. It's like, I could never live here. You, 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 you learn these different things. So in my process of learning, and I have never hid this from anybody on my, my pages when I'm not getting banned, it's like, I'm not an expert on this stuff. But when I ask myself, does a principal or does a, does a politician's policies fall in line with the Constitution? If they do not, then I cannot support that politician. Now, I realize there's not a politician around today, honestly, unless it was like Thomas Massey or Rand Paul, 
that's going to pass this constitutionality purity test. It doesn't exist. They don't. They got to play the game. That's why I think the whole system is flawed, but name me a better system. There isn't one. But I always love playing devil advocate in my own head against myself. It's fun. We have great arguments up there. So um, when I see where Trump has strayed from the Constitution for the sake of taking on this Fox populist positioning, it's like, bro, you'd be willing to sell out your own mother to get a vote. So when Trump went against the Second Amendment, when Trump did a lot of these things, well, so, it, so, it was, so, it was stop on, the, on the Second Amendment. I'm looking at that. Yeah. So the bump, the bump stock ban yeah. is the one that he that actually went through under his administration. Yeah. The red flag laws. I'm trying to look mm-hmm. it up in real time. He supported that. Yeah. But the, the, nothing, nothing went through for red flag laws at the federal level. Uh, I know. No. No, okay. which would be highly, highly illegal. You can't. No, no, do I know. I mean, well, even I bump just... stocks. Even I don't know how that even got through. But either way, uh, and there, the Supreme Court's actually going to look at that because Joe Biden is upholding it. So that'll tell you something. When a Democrat, as stupid as Joe Biden, is upholding a Trump policy, when in regards to the Second Amendment, like, then you know it's anti Second Amendment. No, but, but now the, the the red flag one, the red flag laws, mm. uh, it, is is one of those uh, zones where I've also had the same type of evolution. Once you understand yeah. how the administrative state will fabricate yes, red flags, yes, thank red, you. Now, but Brother, that being said, like, that being said, I make, yeah. Be, and I, I said, love how like, excited no, you get about this. I no, love, yes, yes. Oh, liberty, liberty. Viva attended a he attended a, a protest. He's a day, he's a threat takeaway. I don't have any, but you know, well, I had a right. No, no, you're right, you're right, brother. But flip, but the flip side, even back in the day, and I'm trying to refresh my memory as to what Trump said at the time. Vague, uh, you know, it didn't really elaborate on what he intended to mean from due process. You know, was it yeah. di- was it a schizophrenia diagnosis, which I think most people. I don't know. Some people might not even agree who's with making that. these determinations, David. That's the problem. That's, like well, it, yeah, in theory, the these things like let's let's talk about it like this. Socialism sounds great. Rising tides, all ships. Yes, it sounds wonderful. Now make that happen without the human ability of corruption coming in there and destroying it all. You can't. That is, you can't. That is- Communism sounds great to the untrained ear. But that just basically says the government gets to dictate what you do as a free citizen. Therefore, you're not free. So it's like, I get the premise behind red flag laws. I do. It makes sense. But who are the arbiters of this? Who is, is, who are these angels, David? Who are these angels going to make these very neutrality type positioning of saying, well, you know, because we've seen how divided politics have made us. You can't even look to the SCOTUS now to give you an accurate, constitutionally sound, unbiased decision. Nobody can. So if that's the case, it shouldn't exist. Now, but my issue is this: I, I, motivation is the driver of reason. It's, it's, it's. Once someone has made a decision, they'll go back and retroactively, you know, okay. find the, the justification. Yeah. It's easy. To, you go back and you say, okay, Trump is not good on the Second Amendment. One can go back and argue, politics is politics. He's making vague uh, assertions. Yeah, I support yeah. red flag laws if due process is satisfied. Although there's that video of him saying, yeah, you know, take the guns take first, take due process. Off, that's not due process. That's no, but, the fact but that's but, the exact opposite. But then he, att- you know, he attenuates that, and then he says, okay, well, I'll, I'll entertain the idea to placate some form of political, yeah. you know. Appealing uh, to the left. If I were going to say that's not a good enough example, I mean, I can yeah. understand that. And now I'm trying to look at DeSantis's position on this. DeSantis, mm-hmm. you know, declared Florida constitutional carry. Yeah. N- now has vowed to fight the bump stock ban, but that's politics as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I can't do a compare and contrast to DeSantis, but okay, understood on that. Mm, and then we're going to yeah, get to you the- can. No, wait, 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 hold on. You can do a compare and contrast. Now, people instantaneously are going to use Florida red flag laws, which I do not agree with. But that wasn't under DeSantis, and that was a legislating body that put that into effect. So DeSantis can't just sit there and say, done. It has to go through the actual dem- dem- democratic process. That was also Rick Scott, his predecessor. So where DeSantis stands on things, I wish he'd be more vocal about it. I really do. Well, but the, as far but, as the whole, we need you- to give away... You bring it up, and it's a very good point. Now, on, on you know, he's very vocal about attacking the federal bump stock ban, no. but arguably not as vocal about attacking the Florida state red. Florida state red. Well, red, at red, the same time, I'm not flag. also I'm not sitting there with a microscope watching the guy, so I could be wrong on that. I would like to see more, and I think more Floridians are speaking up about that. And DeSantis himself has said it's got to come from the legislating body. Hence, the whole fracking in the Everglades that Nikki Haley suggested. It's like the legislating body said we're not doing that. I respect democracy, so that's what the people want. But regardless of what the people want, the Second Amendment stands true to everything. So as a constitutionalist, it never should have been on the books. It should never have been yeah. voted in. Okay, fair, so. fair enough. And, and uh, I, again, the goal is also not to make you or coerce you or to try to press you to change your mind. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to look what? into that red flag because- No, 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 change my mind about what? What, what well, do we change about, my mind about, about? about, you know, DeSantis versus Trump or what happens if it's Trump versus Biden or Trump Biden- I, I, Bro, I really don't think that. So here's, here's my hot take on this one. 
It's not Biden. No, they're not no, running. No, I called that a year what? and a half ago. They, yeah. He, he, <laughs> I can't. I can't say it, and I don't want to. I, Excuse I, me for that. I'm sorry. I'm hacking stuff. Bro, I, I the can't DNC say, right now. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say like I, 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 I'm not wishing anything ill, and it's not a, it's not a. Fear oh, I do. I do. I'll be the first one to tell you, David. I can't wait for that dude to pass so I can piss on his grave. But I promised myself after the army, I'd never stand in another line again. So and I gotta. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, he, he's, um, he's, not, he's not making it a year and a half ago. It was clear. No. It's even more clear now. The Bro, only his approval is rate in the, is in the tanks. I think they were running Newsom against DeSantis to see how Newsom could do against DeSantis as a potential runner. They're not running Newsom. Newsom got destroyed by DeSantis. If you can't beat DeSantis, here's the thing. I think the DNC is playing this extremely smart, extremely smart. They're going to wait to see who the GOP nominates. And the DNC right now, they're in panic mode. They're trying to find somebody they can rally around. It ain't Biden. If they run Biden, oh, my God, dude, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be like a battle of, like, the the boomer cons. It's going to be like, yeah. I, like I, I was just thinking, like, doesn't the CIA or the FBI, doesn't intelligence have, like, a heart attack ray gun? Like, they do have that. Dude, right? I don't know. I got I got to give this thing of, like, this is my first and last exposure to John Burke Melgrain. Well, go fuck yourself. I don't care. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. a bunch of babies. Come oh, on. Oh, he says something I don't like. I'm never going to wish you him again. It's At least so... I'm open-minded enough to sit there and say, let's listen to what you have to say. No, well, the funny thing know. is, like, I, I, I've, been ra- I've been saying how annoying and obnoxious the DeSantis online Twitter army is, and I can see how some can look at some of the replies in our in our you know tweet i'm having you on i, I, I noticed, noticed. Some ba- I, I noticed some yeah on both, Bro, sides. both sides do this but everyone I'm not needs gonna to sit th- there and say i'm not gonna sit there and say that you know one side is only guilty of this but brother i will say this though donald trump started this you know we we talk about and you you make some good points that i agree with here but i think your points are a little um they're short-sighted in the sense that we talk about how people are fabricating the epstein stuff with trump fair enough I'm, I'm all about due process. I think you've got to give me the proof, brother. I don't even think being a flight log, name on a flight log, instantaneously makes you a pedophile. No, but I think Cl- Clinton has, Clinton has. Ah, yeah, that, that one is. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, <laughs> someone posted a tweet but the, yesterday. But the said, point that I'm trying to make on this one, though, is that for Trump to pearl clutch or Trump supporters to pearl clutch over this, as far as the DeSantis people now, now I'm not going to do that. Because I feel like that's disingenuous, it's intellectually dishonest, and it's outright disgusting to go to that level. Because I don't I don't take pedophilia as just a casual insult. I think it's legit and it's disgusting. We're talking about actual victims. But when I saw Donald Trump do the same thing to DeSantis months ago, and then nobody has any beef with that, but then you pearl clutch but now. No, but that's I think I, I remember people. Uh, criticizing Trump, even on the Trump no, side, for, no, the, for the comment about not, him having beers with his with the students, right? That's the picture of him having beers with yeah, his students. Yeah, and Trump doubled down on that one. So it was the, it was the, that's, that's another one. I think that one right there was the thing that cemented in my mind saying, I will never vote for this guy. This is disgusting. This is disgusting. Like, number one, the way I looked at it is like, look, if Trump's on our side, put it this way. If I was in the Trump campaign team, I would say, do not attack Ron DeSantis. Not for the sake of being scared. When you share that spotlight, you are giving him spotlight. DeSantis would not be nearly as possible or as, as popular right now. And that's subjective. I know people are going to disagree with that. Yeah, a lot of people. Had you not attacked him, DeSantis would be literally dead in the water. But Trump doesn't seem to understand when you attack somebody, you're giving them exposure. Now, there's a difference in attacking somebody and under or, or, or undermining or not undermining, but proving their stance is stupid and wrong. That's different. But DeSantis' stances, you can't prove wrong. What he's done in Florida, I want to see on the national scale. Now, there's some things I don't agree with DeSantis on. I mean, again, no one's going to pass that purity test. But Donald Trump just doesn't understand when you've got that nuclear energy of like people watch me and people do i'm not gonna sit there and lie about it. of course they do but when you share that it's like dude what are you doing like you're you're giving this guy fucking you're giving him oxygen but when he accused desantis of that it's like you've just lowered the bar to such a disgusting level of pedophilia really oh, john Come first on. of all look, a lot of people are gonna say to you right now on the one Go hand ahead. um 
you knew Trump calls people names. It's part of the brand. Some of them are humorous. Some of them are juvenile. He does. I've it. never seen him go to that level, though. Uh, well, I, I, no, no, he's. I mean, he, Rosie he, he O'Donnell he called a fat cow. Like, yeah, fat. yeah. But when he does it to one of our own, I'm kind of like, whoa. Well, but no, but so now, I'll now, acknowledge there's some hypocrisy this, on my. I'll acknowledge that to yeah, a degree. Oh, and, and part two of this. When he does it to one of our own, there's going to be a lot of people out there that say DeSantis should have never been running against Trump in the first place. So, brother, where is that in the Constitution? Well, it's, but, it's, well but where is it? Don't in the you don't you want competition in a free market? Well, don't on. you want the if better of both? But John, if you're talking about the Constitution, that involves the right to insult people as well. So they're both exercising well, their constitutional rights. No, 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 no. Now you're making it about a whole issue, and I, that's that, bro. Don't you do that to me? No, no, I'm. Don't gonna, you, hey, don't you, where, where I never that, once said that's not in his First Amendment right. You're trying to straw man this motherfucker. No, no, no. Don't you but you're, you're criticizing. You're, criti you're criticizing him for insulting. Yes. Where yeah. some people are going to criticize DeSantis for running, and you say, "Well, oh, where agree. is it in the Constitution he can't run? Where is it in the Constitution he can't himself?" Well, no, I so think okay, fair enough. No, no, I see your point on that one. So my my thing is that when you say these, when you say what you just said. In my mind, I automatically go to what a lot of Trump opponents on Twitter say and everything that encompasses that. So I feel like a lot of people say, like, DeSantis stabbed him in the back. It was this, that, and the other. But why don't they say the same thing about Vivek, Nikki Haley, or any of these other people? Hold on, Only DeSantis. Who, who's, who's stabbing who in the back? That, that's what a lot of people say when they say DeSantis should not have run against yeah, but, well, Trump because they uh, stabbed some, him in the back. Some people are going to argue that that is, I don't know that I necessarily believe it this way, but that Trump. You see, that's the problem him. right here, brother. You say one thing and I, I associate it with something else that is all encompassing. So when you say DeSantis shouldn't have run against Trump, when we are talking about it in the context of Twitter per se, or the, the statements that are very prevalent on Twitter, that's everything that comes with it. So you've got to be very clear on what you mean and who you're, who you're representing well, when you say such a thing. So no, no, I, no, I, no, forgive no, me no, for no, misunderstanding you no, on no, that. If you're, uh, now, what I was just about to say, no, that people said DeSantis should never have run against Trump. And people are going right. to say the reason for that is because Trump, arguably, I'll, I'll, uh, some people won't agree with it, but yeah. you know, helped DeSantis's career. DeSantis should have waited until 2028. Had Let's Trump's push pause on that one though. And not Trump. Yeah. Trump endorsed him. Now, here's the other thing. Does an endorsement to you, in your opinion, does an endorsement mean blind fealty? Uh, no. Okay, there we go. That just proves the whole argument right there. No. Trump endorsed DeSantis in the first election, and he won by, what, four points? Trump did not endorse DeSantis in the second election, which, by the way, Trump also wanted DeSantis. MAGA Inc. wanted him removed from the ballot in Florida. Did you know that? I did not know that, and I'm not going to agree with it, but I'm going to go look. No, no, that's fair. All I ask, do your research. MAGA Inc., I actually, I have the article link. I could post it for you if you want to look it up. Oh, Trump so, did the same please. thing to DeSantis. This is prior. This is before Trump was talked about being removed on the ballots. This is before. MAGA already tried this against DeSantis. This is truth. This you'll is flip, truth. You'll, you'll, you'll flip me the link. I, I, uh, I'm I'll do it right now, brother. I'll have, do it right now for it. you. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying this to, like, try and sit there and, like, gaslight you. I, I sincerely, let me, I'll, I'll, I, bro, I don't know what I have you saved. I know you gave me your number, but I don't know what the fuck I saved you as. Well, I just, just tweeted it to you. I tweeted okay, it to you. Cool. Florida and, uh, ethics letter. They filed a complaint uploaded by MAGA Inc., um, 15 pages, and it goes into how they said that uh, DeSantis basically violated an ethics issue and shouldn't be allowed to run. MAGA already tried this approach. Now, is it a political tactic? Absolutely it is. This is, this is the disgusting underbelly of politics. But far be it from me or anyone else to sit there and pearl clutch when those same tactics are utilized against you. It's like how how disingenuous, how intellectually dishonest to sit there and say, well, you know, DeSantis shouldn't be allowed to run because he violated this. And then they do it in Colorado for this insurrection nonsense. It's like, bro, that you're sitting there crying over the same thing you tried to pull against DeSantis. If you want a moment to, to read. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, well, hold on. Let me just share the screen here. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I don't want you to jump into anything, but just just read it for yourself. Oh, no, no, you say, I, I, I know I'm, I'm going to be preparing both arguments. Let's see. Let L, see. L Green is in my chat. John, you are a loud mouth. and needs your guest to speak. I'm actually oh, a guest on his show. He's a guest. Okay. Don't, I, don't, people, don't be insulted for me. I'm a very, very uh, not sensitive person. I, I appreciate oh. the fact that you're willing to have such great discussions. Oh, I really do. And I'm sorry. I get mouthy. I get lippy. Don't worry. And I, no, so, and someone, I still apologize for screaming in your ear during the debates for DeSantis. Oh, like, God. I'm so sorry. I, I, dude, I For the audience, he's sitting next to me. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for DeSantis. And his poor eardrum's probably getting blown out from me. You know. I, but just, yeah, all, just read this over. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I think I, I think I understand what's going on here. And I actually think mm -hmm. I, I, I like the lesson that Trump is trying to teach DeSantis right now. All right. I'm, I'll, I'll come back to it. After you, you can, you can call it teaching a lesson. I mean, whatever the case may be, but the stance still stays the same. It's like, don't sit there and pearl clutch when you get punched oh, in the no, same no, capacity or, or, you punch or, somebody or else. Or how about this? 
Uh, how about DeS Trump is uh, right now maybe just giving a, a, a feel to DeSantis as to what the left is going to do if, if uh, you know, Trump, whatever the, whatever the reason is. Not oh, the man, I, I think that's giving Trump way too much credit. Nah, you know, I, don't, when, I, don't think, I, I don't think he's dumb. I don't think he's dumb. He, uh, I think he, he is. is. No, I, I, well, I mean, what, what else would you call it then when you endorse? So let's talk about MAGA Inc. We talk about the most kind of you're, you're familiar on Twitter. You watch everything that talks about like the globalist agenda, the yeah. shills of the NWO. The likes of John McCain, Mitt Romney, Paul Ryan, Lindsey Graham, all you know, all those people. Oh yeah, everyone I just listed, Trump endorsed. Uh, yeah. At what, at what point? Doesn't matter. Well, their politics it, have remained the it, same it, it, the entire it time. At some point, I, look, uh, Trump is not dumb. What he might have is a bit of the. Uh, I call it. it it's, I think presidents need it. A bit of the megalomania complex where he thinks oh, yeah, he, can, for sure, he yeah. can sway people. He can oh, even yeah. he can turn an enemy into a friend. I like to think the same thing. I might just be more cynical and more realistic. <laughs> so, you know, endor okay. endorse a political adversary in the hopes that eventually you can sway them over. You presume good faith in other people, which True. I think does not exist. Which I, yeah, I agree. I agree that you do. Have, there is, and that's what I think a lot of people that don't, they're not as plugged into this as we are. They don't get. But I'm trying to apply the, the standards here in their thinking, their methodology. Yes, that's a thing that Trump did by endorsing them, by saying, look, we need to come together and unite. I can disagree with their politics individually, but as a GOP, we do have to come together and start voting in, in lockstep on some of these issues, which is why Pelosi was such a great speaker. She can whip the house. She gets the votes. Ours don't. So I'm trying to take two sides on this, or I'm trying to apply this in two different aspects. Trump endorses the very same people that currently, everybody says, they're globalists. Like, well, they weren't globalists under Trump. What changed? No, well, first of all, I think uh, characters might have been revealed for sure. Uh, I think the number one criticism, which I have, I and my even my pro-Trump Robert Barnes have leveled, is that uh, he surrounded himself Robert by Barnes? bad. Oh, he's the guy that I do the Sunday night shows with, and uh, the, the biggest legal mind in the world. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the critique is that he didn't clean house. He tr he surrounded yeah. himself with bad choices, people mm -hmm. he thought he could uh, win over with time, and they're bad faith actors and snakes. Will mm -hmm. he make the same mistake again? Probably not. But should you be given that option? Oh, well, I mean, uh, David, I, if you went in, say like you're going to run for president today, which I know you can't do because you're born in Canada. But do you feel like if you were about to enter into that den of snakes, do you think you'd be pretty prepared? Uh, I don't think anybody in the world could have been prepared for what the snakes. What I'm, were going no, to no, 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 no. What I'm saying, though, is like, are you going to be as open minded and trusting? Because that's what Trump ran on. Drain the swamp, drain the swamp. Well, then you have to explain to me then why your picks are so horrendous. You you sit there and you're investigated or you're spied on by the same three letter organization under the Obama administration. And then you turn around and you empower it. And not two weeks ago says he wants to build them a brand new building because they need to atone for their sins. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing yeah, here. Yeah. Well, but I, I'm of the mindset of saying, like, you shouldn't even be in existence to begin with. That is a fair enough critique. Uh, some might argue that uh, one had no <laughs> idea how deep the swamp actually was. And despite wanting to... Oh, drain yeah. The, oh, yeah. Despite, when we uh, say and, swamp, let's just call it corruption. Well, no, it's but, no, corruption. No, no, but, but imagine then, even if the goal were to drain the swamp and you are bogged down for three and a half years defending no. against Russia collusion... No, 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 no. You had two years, 2016 to 2018, you had the holy trifecta. You had the House, you had the Senate, and you had the executive branch. And you actually had the SCOTUS. He had nothing but open runway, brother, to make things happen. And that's where the unity part comes in. Nobody would unify under him. That's the issue. That's the issue. Now, well, we look at Article 230. What happened there? Well, hold nothing. on, hold on, hold on. Nobody would unify under him is the mm. exact argument that legitimizes the tactic that all they have to do is get the media, get politicians to make life a living hell and say, look, mm. nobody can unify under this guy because we won't unify. True. Whether yeah, or yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and he was, he was I, I believe, maybe wrongly so, that he was literally handcuffed. Well, metaphorically handcuffed. Metaphorically handcuffed, yeah. With, with the Russian... He probably was at one point, Fox. <laughs> <laughs> now, you must be, you're thinking a hundred mm. He I'm was, thinking of the PP tape now. I'm, I don't was, believe in that. He was he was handcuffed for the better part of whatever whatever holy trifecta they had. They won't unify under him because <laughs> the media is running twenty four seven that he's Satan incarnate. Um, the question is this: If the machine but, is going to come together like that to make sure you can't, brother, do anything, I, hold on. I got to question that though because yep. hindsight being twenty twenty, why do you have Donald Trump introducing CEO of Johnson and Johnson, Johnson himself, at his rally saying he's made so much money because you favored this klutz? During the vaccines, like I actually, I'm well, sorry, I, I actually, I thought that was um, 
I thought that was a tongue-in-cheek way of putting someone on blast. I'm not sure. I, I other people have disagreed uh, with me. On that. No, no, because you got to remember though, you're looking at this from a very educated above the fray stance. We're talking about what do you because you have to appeal. You and I both I, know I think that when you're going to run a campaign. Off. I think that, when you're that, going to run a campaign, you've got to appeal to the common voter, and the common voter usually is probably a single issue voter quite honestly. But when you're bringing up the Johnson and Johnson CEO, whom Trump even talked about as far as being proud of the vaccine and the saving of lives up until about like four months ago, before even in his own rallies, he started getting booed by his own people saying, this is a horrible thing. But and now, then he shifts but, gears. No, but so, but uh, follow your own rationale there. You try okay. to, he, he's trying to appeal to the average voter <clears> and <throat> does something that pisses off the average voter of his base. Why would he do that? I mean, I, I, I tried to wrestle with that as well. Cause what he's the not even hiding he? it anymore. No, I, it was, some might say it's when you say that been, that Klaus Schwab is doing a very good job, it's like. Well, so, so your rational, your rationality is that saying, if I do things that piss people off, it's to appeal to the common voter. No, I, th I thought because he, I, why I, I literally <laughs> thought he was just putting them on blast to show what. what no, what no, no, they were. no. Um, no, they also donated to him. But uh, the, now here's the other question is if he's doing all of this and he's such a shill for big pharma and he's part of the swamp, et cetera, why, why on earth are they fighting? Him I, this? I don't think necessarily he's part of the swamp. I think he just makes stupid picks. I think, I think Trump did a lot of good. I'm not going to deny that. I think Trump did economically. We were great under the first two years. Gas was cheap. The most, the most prominent two things I feel the common voter cared about was gas and the cost of groceries. And we've seen them inflate sky high during the, uh, during the COVID pandemic, if you, if you want to even call it that anymore. But where, where Trump um, kind of went wrong on that is just his decision making. His decision making, I, I'm sorry, when you're the leader of the free world and your decisions are wrong, You've got to be held accountable. And there's only so much. I mean, have you noticed Trump has turned into everything? It's just, it's always somebody else. Can you give me a soundbite? Can you give me a clip where Trump takes accountability for any wrong decision? Uh, like legitimately? I think, I, think that's a, uh, I think that's an unfair question to ask of any politician. Oh, come on. I, no, I, come first of all, on. John, John, why don't, I mean, I, I apologize because if I've done something wrong, I apologize. That's a good leader. That's a good leader. Yeah, that's a good father. That's a good. That's a good husband. I, I won't be president. I won't be prime minister because I don't think you can. But do, that do you as prime think minister. those attributes should be voided just because you take that position? DeSantis well, but, but, apologized but, but, for the lockdowns. He said we reversed course. We shouldn't have done it. Uh, I can respect the, that. Uh, well, reversed course uh, is is just changing. I mean, I'm not sure that apologize is even the right word there. Did Trump did he, do that? Did he? Well, no. But did, did DeSantis apologize for talking about how the vaccine was so good at saving lives? I mean. He's like, he reversed, uh, he did. He reversed but, course, but, said, uh, yeah, we're but, wrong. Uh, but hold on a second. At what point do you hold someone's rash, intemp intempestive decisions against them? Oh, the vaccine's good. Now I realize it's not good. So I'm going to no, turn no, no, back no, and that, give that's credit fair. That? That's fair. But so, Trump hasn't. I, but I'm, I look, at some point in, the, in this political environment, uh, no, I, I know. Hold on. You just skimmed no, right by. I just answered your question. No, no, DeSantis no, 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 did. No, Trump hasn't. So no, no, I have no, to hold him, you know. No, no, hold on. I, what, what, what DeSantis did was display that he makes rash, unfounded decisions, but then comes back on them when he realizes they were wrong. Coming so then out, Trump still makes rash decisions because well, he I, hasn't reversed course yet. Uh, I'd rather go with the oh, former. No, I'm, but, dude, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, fault, I'm faulting Trump. He he has to okay. at some point reverse track on the vaccine. I think he will. I don't think he will. I, I, bro, I really don't think yeah, he will. Yeah, well, well, that, that's think about Think that, about if he did, though, because then he's got to admit something was something that big was so massively wrong. Well, Trump, I, no, he's going to won't they, let him. No, tr I, I've, I've made the <laughs> argument for Trump. Operation Warp Speed was a good idea. It was only intended to provide a vaccine, an emergency vaccine, to the yeah, most but vulnerable. But you and I both know that the clinical trials of a vaccine is five to seven years. No, tops. we all know. We all know that. And he gets to say that Pfizer lied, and he gets to prosecute them. I mean, DeSantis. He's not going he, to. Well, DeS DeSantis has set up the, um, <clears throat> oh, the uh, grand jury for you know the, the Pfizer for in Fauci, Florida, yeah. but hasn't Fauci done anything too. with it yet. Um, he can't. He's not president. No, no, but, no, no. He set it up at the state level. Did he not set it up at the state level? Mm. Set up a, a state grand jury. Hold on. Let me let me fact check that. Uh, if Bottom he did, line, I don't know. I mean, if he did, good. And this, this is where, I, where even from my own perspective, I can say people are going to say motivation is the master of reason. DeSantis says the vaccine is great. It's saving lives. 99% of the people hospitalized are unvaccinated. And then he reverses track and corrects. That also means that he made a decision a little bit rashly uh, too early on, much like Trump did. He followed system. what the president of the United States and the CDC uh, and the FDA well, all the suggested. CDC. But the DeSantis CDC. actually, no, he followed the FDA as well. The well, FDA no, backed the vaccine. No, I, 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 the I, who, I agree with everybody. that. Everybody. The he same followed. people, the same people Trump was listening to, DeSantis as a subordinate governor, 
was taking that same advice. Now, DeSantis, in his positioning politically, reverse course as a governor, not the president. And what did he do? He took so much blowback. Christy Noam took so much blowback, even though she did want to lock down, but the legislators wouldn't let her. Trump attacked Kemp for trying to reopen Georgia. He also said Florida reopening early was great. They're doing wonderfully. And then Trump reverses on that and says Cuomo handled it better than DeSantis. So I'm sorry, but the 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 ideas that you're giving me, Trump himself flip-flops on for political purposes. So I don't know where this guy foundation, foundationally stands. He flip-flops. He's no different than Vivek. I don't think Vivek is <clears throat> flip-flopped. I, 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 Bro, I, he I, flip-flopped I, on Israel. He flip-flopped on Trump. He wrote a goddamn book about it. I Well, two things can be true at the same time. Uh, yeah. But now I, I have to, I, 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 my, my criticism against Trump is, or my criticism of Trump, and he's going to have to, I think he's going to have to address it, is the So death. you're still going to vote for Trump? I don't vote. But I, first of all, I don't, I don't vote. I'm Canadian. I don't support anybody. Wait, 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 wait. You, but you can vote. No. You're a citizen, right? No, 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 no. I'm not a citizen. I, I'm oh, a, I'm, I'm on oh a that visa. sucks. I mean, I, I can vote for a Democrat. I just can't vote for a Republican. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Um, but well, uh, how long do you have until you get your citizenship? Well, it's going to be, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, it's in the works. It takes time. I think you told me about this, didn't you? Well, I got, I'm, on a, I'm on a temporary visa now. We're gonna, but doesn't gonna it go aggravate you that you've got people that literally cross that border illegally and they have a direct pathway to you, citizenship? You, you, that you, no, you do it the right way, you pay your taxes, and you get screwed? Pay taxes, pay up the wazoo for the actual visa process. Yeah. So the, fir the first one, the O one one cost. Don't you grand. hate that Donald Trump gave them all amnesty? Uh, Twice? Well, let me see. Hold on. Let me, let me fact check. Let me fact check. Go ahead. Donald Take your time. Trump immigrant amnesty. No, I, 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 let's see here. Uh, rebuilding from the ashes. While you're Look. looking that up, L. Green, she says that DeSantis is bought and paid for. I would like to get receipts on where he gets his money from. You show me that and I'll give you a thousand dollars because Hold you're on. too stupid. You can't. Let me, let me, let me, let me do one thing here. I'm not going to also, I can also show you where Disney donated to Trump. Anheuser Bush donated to Trump. Johnson and Johnson donated to Trump. That, 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 that I, I'm not, that I, I've not been definitively uh, swayed on one, one way or the other. Because I, bro, people are going to get money where they get money. I know, I know, I know. Or, but it's just like, I like, I like rolling down to their level of arguments and their, their examples. It's well, like, I, I, I think, yeah, but the, there's, there's some arguments that are better than others in terms of, hold on, what way? Let me get, let me get. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Arkansas crime attorney says, what does the second amendment have to do with why you would vote Biden over Trump? Well, I don't think we've gotten to whether or not you'd vote for Biden over Trump. Why would I ever vote for Joe Biden? Well, the question is going to be if it's Trump, if it's Trump v. Come I'll go libertarian. No, I'll go libertarian. Out. Okay, so <clears throat> and I don't judge voting with your conscience even means you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I just I from policy standpoint alone, why am I going to vote for a Democrat over another Democrat? I'm voting for I now realistically, do I think um, voting for libertarians is going to win? Of course not. It's but a, it's I'm a, not. It's a wasted, I don't. It's a wasted yeah, vote. Except well, from a from if, a from a from a aggregate perspective, yeah, it's wasted. Yeah, but you're voting what you I, want. I, Exactly. I, and I think I, if more people actually did that, we'd actually see some change in this country. Instead of we, we play this game of, well, we got to vote for the lesser of two evils. No, you don't. You can just say, I'm going to vote third. Or, you know, here's the other deal. Some people say, I'm not going to vote because I don't like any of these decisions, right? Any of these people that the, the GOP or the DNC is putting up, fair enough, because I think they're garbage. Now, ultimately, we both know someone's going to have to win. So you're going to have to cast a vote. But I also, and I know you and I disagree on this, if Trump does secure the, the nomination, I don't see him beating the left. He's lost five states, five major states. And right now, the swing state in Iowa, I don't think he's going to. I mean, I don't I think DeSantis is going to beat him in Iowa. And I know that's, well, that I, I'm not. I'm well, that's the, all the delegates, subjective. No, but the delegate system works differently than the, than the general. It anyhow. does. No, how, it does. Um, yes. Do you know? I, I'm not totally familiar with how the delegate system works in Iowa. How does it work? Or it's do, a caucus. You know a caucus. So basically, they're going to be voting here in six days, seven days, six days, who they want their the nominee to be. And I believe, I, I think now, I, I could be wrong. I think Iowa is winner take all, or some of them it is, you know, if you get this many delegates, that goes to you, and they divide up the delegates uh, according to what they vote. But I know there's some states that are, it's winner take all. So I, I, man, I don't know. I don't know about Iowa. But Iowa is definitely going to be one of these telltale signs to where, to play devil's advocate. If DeSantis takes Iowa, that's going to be the proverbial cut that Rocky gives Ivan Drago to say, this is now a fight. This is a ball game. At the same time, though, Cruz took Iowa, lost the presidency. Many people have won Iowa and lost the presidency. So it's kind of like, don't take that as your sign to say, we're going to win now, but saying we're still in this fight, though. You've got people that are coming over to your side. And that's where I think a lot of the Sand supporters come in and say that if we take Iowa, now we're in this thing, we're going to win. It's like, mm, no, DeSantis is going to have to fight. He's, he's showing that he wants it. He's earning it. He's on the ground. He's visited 
every single county well, in so, Iowa. So, well, unfortunately, some people are faulting DeSantis for having done that when tornadoes are landing in Florida and destroying property in DeSantis. What is he going to do? I, 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 bro, well, I hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. What is Trump doing about it? Well, I want Trump, the tornadoes to step. Let's let's look at you know, this is what I love. These these are the disingenuous arguments. Like I want DeSantis to get on that coastline and say, listen to me, nature, powers of nature. I want these tornadoes to stop. Or does he actually have people in place as a leader that are making things happen? And he does. People that are actually going, bro, you live in Florida. No, you I, live I, in Florida. I, I don't, so go, you did, I don't be, no. with me here. Do you feel like he's done a great job as governor over there? I, I think he's done a, well, for sure. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have come okay. to Florida if I didn't think so. I, I think, yeah. I, I'm glad I'm, that you're authentic enough and you, no, you give me an answer. I, I, yeah. I, I'm telling this to like people who I like, who are, I know are DeSantis supporters. My issue mm -hmm. is that I like DeSantis. Mm -hmm. I, I, my assessment, he doesn't have a snowball's chance in summer. And this is burning the system to the ground. But he's see, won, he's people won the worst said the campaign same thing. I've ever seen. I mean, he's no, won no, the wait, worst wait. campaign. Let's and, unpack a lot of what you just said. Yeah. Where did Trump stand in 2015? He was getting slaughtered in the polls. I don't Nobody I thought. No, I don't he was. He was getting destroyed in the polls. The polls that suddenly matter now didn't matter back then, but they matter when Trump's losing or when Trump's winning. Well, no, no first of all, I, I don't remember those polls, uh, so I won't speak to them. Go look them up. Go I, I just after the show. I, I remember, go look I remember they had him, uh, you know, dead to rights against oh, God, Clinton yeah. in general. Even, even I thought he was going to be destroyed by Hillary. Like, there ain't no way. Dude, he pulled I, off I, a squeaker. I should have put a thousand bucks on Trump back then. Oh, nobody would, bro. Um, nobody saw him winning that. He was a mad, but at the time he was a wild card. He was truly a grassroots maverick. But now it's not the case. But when we look at DeSantis versus Trump, here's the thing. Like, I don't if people are gonna vote Trump, I don't hate those people. I don't hate those voters. I just I don't think that Trump is the best um conservative candidate to represent what the g and i don't even like the gop i think the gop is kind of full of shit in many different aspects of it but i feel like if i have to align myself as a constitutionalist it's going to be with the gop but that being said when i do a side-by-side -side of policy of trump versus desantis i think desantis his his support of the policies that i i find more important they align more with my values my my what i want to see talked about so if i i just don't want people to think that i don't like trump voters i don't like cultists regardless of which side they come from. And trust me, there's cultists in the DeSantis camp. I don't like either. I've had you, to unfollow a lot of them. Do you, um, you don't have any direct coordination with the DeSantis campaign? No. Okay. Why would I? No, no, I was just wondering, because like, I, I know- I would love to, I would love to have DeSantis on the show, because no, I would love to sit him down and grill him on the Second Amendment. It's like, bro, as a veteran, I'd love to grill him on the VAs, the VA systems that are just- yeah. Horrible, horrible right now. And you you come from Canada where there's nationalized health care. Tell tell the audience how good that is. Oh no, they, they, well they they offer the they offer the veterans euthanasia. It's an amazing thing. It's, Jesus you call, you call up for PTSD. They literally recommend medical assistance and dying. Bro, I I I, I oh my god. Oh so but now god. hold on. So I, I've got my notes now. So Second Damn. Amendment. It's he didn't hire the right people. Didn't fire the right people. Uh, no, Second he, Amendment. He went against the Second Amendment. It has nothing yeah, to no, do no, with no, that. No, he no, went no, against no, it. Yeah. No, no. I'm just I'm just highlighting your points in terms okay. of uh, critic of critique of Trump. He yeah. uh, flip flopped or didn't flip flop or hasn't reversed track where he should have. Um, yeah. He supported the lockdowns. He didn't he didn't authorize the lockdowns, but he he certainly didn't stand against them as yeah, as I, 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 that, ferociously as he should have. As and, a president well, that you you claim to be, you know, liberty, the Constitution. Um, you know, the fact that he went after Thomas Massey in regards to his opposition to the CARES Act. And, you know, Massey's like, I don't believe in all this spending. He wanted Massey thrown out of the party. Massey, uh, you, you know, you know, Thomas Massey. He's probably one of the most principled conservative slash libertarians in the GOP within the GOP. John, I got to bring this this chat mm -hmm. up right here. This rumble rant on the top. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not on the top, but I'm going to get there. Um, well, hold on. Finboy Slick says regarding J and J guy, Trump did similar about Syria, tried to pull out and was overridden twice. Then he yeah, said, yeah, that oh, one I don't agree. Yeah, yeah. We're staying on it. Okay. Ginger Ninja, the man who made this chess set behind me, by the way. I, I'll, I'll, it's the most let beautiful chess set ever. Yeah, hold on. Let, let me bring out the screen. It's remove. It's the chess table. He it's, made that? Yeah, he made it from scratch. He's got a video oh, nice. on, on Rumble. Good for it's him. It's amazing. It's, a, it's amazing. That's beautiful. Um, I want he one. Says, no. <laughs> Ginger, how Who's long did that take? He says, John, are you saying that DeSantis has the balls to shut down the three letter agencies? He no. won't even say the election was tampered with. He's spineless. Um, no, I don't. And I don't think there's a single politician that would. Vivek makes that claim. I don't. I don't think he will either. I think DeSantis is, ba you know, let me dream just for a second. Just let me have this place to like have any politician that would actually, uh, you know, abolish it. Would they? No, I think I think that's a running point. But I will say this. Um, he certainly won't empower them like Trump does and has. 
You know, I, that, you, I don't know. I, I have, I take issue with saying what he might do in the future compared to what. No, no, I, well, I, he, I did. He, he did. Well, the, the, he did. He empowered the, the FBI. The new, with, with the new, with the building of the new building thing. No, 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 no. That bro, that's just that. That's Trump being Trump. I'm talking about actual policies. Trump funded the, the FBI. He he appointed Ray to the head of the FBI. When we saw the Peter Stroh and Lisa Page stuff break, when we saw the Obama administration manipulate and utilize these three-letter agencies for a political purpose, you know, I think any politician with any strength, that's why I, Vivek appeals to me in many different cases. That he says the things I like to hear. But it's just like, why do we still have these three-letter agencies around? Because the American public are so bought into this idea that they provide this blanket of security because they have these metrics to go by by saying, look at all these bad things they have thwarted. No, they were, they were the but ones. But show me all up. the bad things. <laughs> they Thank were sitting. <laughs> no, Thank no, you. I, Thank I, you. I, I agree. I, yes. No, what I are all the I've bad things? I so if you're going to make the argument about which politician is going to abolish it, then no, there's bro. I don't think any of them will. That's why I say constitutionalist. It's like, I got to vote for the lesser of the two, but I do think that DeSantis, you know, he stood up against the COVID lockdowns afterwards. He reversed course on that where Trump has not, I can respect that in a leader. Do I think that he ever should have shut down? No, I don't. That's why I did respect Christy Noam until I actually looked into it. And it was a legislating body that said, we're not going to shut down. So that's one of those things that, like, I kind of feel like I'm on my own here in certain circumstances of saying, I'm not going to sit there and armchair quarterback and say that was not a difficult decision to make. I'm not going to sit there and be so emotionally callous by saying like, well, you know, he should have done. But realistically speaking, I don't think people understand the secondary and tertiary ramifications of the economy, of the populace of America. Let's just talk about education for the youth. The lockdowns have hurt us tremendously. The economy, that's not just from Biden. The PPP loans, billions in fraudulent charges when the Fed is just running and running and running. What did we think was going to happen? So it was it's a hard decision to make. Um, and I'm not going to be like CNN and says Trump said we need to do bleach in the system. That's not what he said. I understand it. I agree with what Trump said in certain in certain un, unspoken ways. But Anthony Fauci shows a sincere breakdown in government. When you've got a guy that during the 80s caused so many homosexuals to get murdered and deaths of because of how he handled HIV. At one point, Fauci came out and said HIV is airborne, or we think it is. Yeah, you, can Fauci, it from, you can get it from sitting in your kitchen. So when you've got someone like that in a government organization that does not understand, number one, how the science works, or secondly, how to bring that to the populace without causing panic, but at least reasoning with them saying like, look, we don't know what COVID is, but here's the choices that we're going to make. The ones that we're not going to do is that we're not going to rush something that we just don't know if it works or not. We've got to do testing. So all we can do is respect the Constitution. If you want to stay home, stay home. But explain to me, David, explain this to me. When you've got Target, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, all of these stayed open, during COVID. Now you explain the logic in this to me. All of these major corporations stayed open during COVID. The mom and pop businesses that populated hundreds of thousands in America that are now destroyed as a result of the lockdowns and the shutdowns. Explain to me how funneling people with the intent to prevent the spread of COVID when you send them into these COVID factories where thousands of people are going and you want to stop the spread instead of dis, you know, dispersing and saying, go to these individual mom and pop, there's less population. Explain that to me because it doesn't fucking work. Well, it makes there, no sense. There's no, there's no question about that. Uh, no. there, there I being, love how you say uh, boot. I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering why you have so much trash on your table. <laughs> I'm <laughs> big, but, okay, I'm joking. I'm a but dirty no, man. I'm a, no, I, so, uh, I do okay. need to do a better cleaning. There's, um, uh, okay, let me, the, the, here, here's the question. It goes back to Ginger Ninja. DeSantis yeah. will not, DeSantis and a lot of the supporters want to actually either legitimize the 2020 election or mm -hmm. forget about it. Mm -hmm. uh, let me, I'll ask you the straight up question. Do you think the 2020 election was a fair election? I think there was a lot of tampering that was going on. But here's the thing. Can you show me evidence that was upheld in any court that says it was? Uph the, the upheld in the court would be the worst argument since many of the cases were not heard on standing. But uh, of, of those cases, though, of those cases, how many judges were Trump appointed? Well, I don't care about that. I mean, I uh, do. Oh, that shows oh, an implicit bias. 
Well, no, but John, what you're dis what I you're love how you skimmed over that. No, 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 Why no, no, did you no, skip no. right over no, that? So oh, a, oh. a Trump appointed judge wouldn't even hear the case. Now, look, honestly, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. I don't know. I genuinely don't know, brother. I saw what happened at three o'clock in the morning. What was it Michigan or Wisconsin when those votes spiked? I Do I was... trust Dominion Software? No, I don't. I don't because even Democrats pre 2016 did not want them. Elizabeth Pre-day, Warren complained in, about in, 20, in 2020. They didn't. They were they prepared. No, 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 I'm going back to the Al Gore Bush era. Of, Let's do the fucking hanging chads. No, absolutely. Baby. The yeah. Javier, the Javier Malay, same oh, day paper Love trail. That. Yes, That's it. yes. Um, fuck yes. But hold on. Why not? But, but to, but, to John, your point, to that yeah. gentleman's point, though, do I think it's rigged? I don't know. Well, I, I mean, genuinely okay. don't know. Let me tell you. But I will oh, tell oh, you this: I'll simplify. using this, using the 2020 fraudulent election, is not going to win you the next election. It's not. I'm sorry. The GOP has moved on. They are, and whether you agree with me or not, people are saying if we stay bogged down on this issue, well, then my my question is, what's going to prevent it from being rigged again? So why is Trump running again if it's just going to be rigged? And of the of the elections that GOP did win, are those not rigged? So uh, which no, elections are rigged? The burden of proof is on them. Prove well, to me go. that these elections across are rigged. And and I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying that if you're going to use this as the crux of your argument, then why the fuck are you even voting Trump? No, 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 no. What, what I'm not saying you personally. Is, no, no. Don't worry. Uh, what I'm, my my point in this is that telling people to either forget or it wasn't rigged mm-hmm. uh, is is going to be a. Uh, is denying the corruption of the system. And I, you're, you're, you're faulting Trump for not that. having drained the swamp. If somebody, DeSantis, can't even come out and say January 6th was an inside setup job, the 2020 election was rigged, not necessarily mm-hmm. through Dominion. I don't think it was rigged through Dominion. You see, I, here's it was, the reason. Rig- I love, I love what you're doing here. You're trying to get DeSantis to become an echo chamber mouthpiece for Donald Trump. That's what you're wanting him no, to do. Well, what I'm no, highlighting, no, 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 hear, me, hear me out. Yeah. Because if DeSantis does that, all he's going to get from those same types of Trump supporters, he's just mirroring what Trump said. Uh, well, I don't that, know what no, he, there is, bro, no, It's damned look, if you do, damned if you don't. That's the maybe. position you put DeSantis in. So DeSantis needs to do the intelligent thing and say, look, you're pig, you're farm. You fucked it up, you deal with it. I'm a clean slate over here. This is what I'm going to do. Trump and his bullshit, sorry, bro. You deal with that nonsense. That's all you. January 6th wouldn't even have fucking happened if that man had a shred of fucking integrity. Now, you explain to me why the actual places he hired for over three quarters of a million dollars to investigate voter fraud turned up nothing. Oh, I don't. I don't think they turned up nothing at all. Bro, they admitted it. They just mm-hmm. came out. They go look it up. I'm. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I get no, passionate. No, I'm not. No, I'm no, not, but I'm not. Not, I. I know it's that they. Those people that bring this up, it's like, bro. I want to agree with you. I do. But at the same time, if that's going to be the reasoning that you're going to vote for Trump, I think you're an idiot. His no, no, policies but, 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 are horrible. But, but, but John, how is anybody going to fix the system? If you oh, yeah, recognize that it's that it's broken, I mean, you uh, got you to say ultimately you got to play the game to win. I I know, dude. I, I agree with but you. No, hold on, stop, stop, it's, stop it's there. Up, yeah. You got to play the game to win. But then when no. Trump when Trump plays the game and you know endorses some globalist uh, GOP, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, you you fault him for it. I mean, this is where motivation is. No, no, the no. I'm of faulting. Reason. No, no. I'm faulting the voter base for being hypocritical in the standards they want to apply to one yet not the other. I literally explained that to you. I said, I get why Trump does that. You've got to unite the GOP. But what I, my positioning was, and I, I invite you to rewind the tape and go back and re, re, re-listen to what I said. I said that there is an appeal to the common voter where if the Magadonians are going to say that these are the globalist elite, then you need to apply those same standards that you apply to Ron DeSantis to Donald Trump, and you don't do that. Therefore, you're intellectually dishonest and you're hypocritical at best. Now, do I understand the reasoning why he did it? Yes, that's playing the game. I get that. I understand that. I'm not uh, I'm not necessarily faulting Trump. That's Trump trying to lead. I get that. But at the same time, don't sit there with your finger pointing an agony. Okay, not okay. you personally, but, no, but the accusations. Sorry. Um well, okay, if that's more of a critique. I just I would love for the I would love for the elections I saw in the comment to be verified. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, well, but you know, I've actually got a friend up in Washington and she oversees a lot of these. She says half the time Republicans don't even they don't even turn up. I'm going to skip the, the, the swear from Ginger Ninja, but he says, you seem to be forgetting all the pressure Trump was under to do federal lockdowns. He oh, saved, I don't give a fuck. It's called leadership, not no, leadership. No, but, no, but Make I, the I, decision I, to be a goddamn leader. No, but he Stop. can't. But John, he can't not control you. the state. No, don't worry. But I, but I agree with Ginger Ninja. 
Uh, mm -hmm. you, he can't control the no, state No, he levels. can't. No, I agree. That is the state's uh, right. But at what point do you have to sit there and say, look, I'm against this? Trump never said. He never. He didn't have nearly the tenacity think, or the ferocity I mean, he does now. I, I think he, well, he, actually, he still, he still brags that lockdowns the vaccine worked. No, he brags about the vaccine worked. But uh, I, guess no, it, I hold it, on. it may wait, have worked wait, wait, on wait, some wait, demographic. No, I've got the tweets. Show I've got me. the tweets. Hold on, let me let me pull these yeah, up real quick. It. I think and I uh, while, tweeted them on do, Instagram. While you do that, let, let me read a, a few of these super chats. Uh, the Rumble rants. Uh, the, the, oh, hold on, down here. Arkansas crime attorney says his argument about Trump's violation of Second Amendment is the reason to turn against Trump. However, at the beginning, John literally said he would vote for Biden over Trump. Invalid argument. Nope, I don't think he nope, said that. Nope. Don't never worry. said I'd vote for Biden. You're lying. That nah, gentleman is a Biden. bad faith no, argument. He's I, an idiot. I, Ignore him. I hope the money was good. You donated for me to troll you, you fucking moron. Arkansas, Arkansas. I would never. I would never vote for Biden. But you want me to say that because then, then what that does? It basically validates your perception of me. That's all it is. Well, when I, I, I will give you a thousand bucks if you say if you can prove where I said I'll no, vote no, for no, Biden. No, well, no, I, I Not you. That, I'm talking about that moron. No, but Ar donate Ar money to me, goddammit. it. Arkansas crime attorney is a lawyer. He's a very smart guy. That he sounds been... like an idiot to me. No, though, because he's, he's I've known him for, you know, well, that, in my, in Bro, fairness... my, I don't know this guy. So I'm looking at this from an unbiased perspective. If he's saying I'm voting for Biden and I said that you're a fucking liar. No, 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 you're a happened? horrible lawyer. <laughs> you're a horrible lawyer. I would love to debate you. Bring him on. Let's fucking debate him. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm, I'm going to cough again. And here, El Green says John will not vote, period. Never said that either. I said I'd vote third party. You see, this is the problem with you people. And by you people, I mean you Magadonian fucking morons that you're cultists. Not the good faith debaters. Not the Davids here. But what you try and do is you try and manipulate truth to fit your political bias and narrative. I have literally said I'm not voting for Donald Trump. I'm voting for Ron DeSantis. You you clearly ignored that. Why are you ignoring that? Because you want your belief to be the prominent belief and say, look how wrong John is. You can't prove me wrong. So you make shit up. It's called gaslighting. And these people do a phenomenal job. But I'm glad they're at least paying you to say this dumb shit. I need I, them to come to my Rumble channel and pay me oh, so no, they can no. say this dumb shit and for me to own them. First of all, uh, and by the I, way, I, I, I yeah. No, I was going to say that I know I know the crowd is going to be saying there's probably a lot of confession through projection because. Um, they can say whatever they want, but I, the thing well, is, they can't prove anything that I've said wrong. Instead, it's straw man, no, well, misrepresent, no, no, well, gaslight. Yeah, no, some, some, some because I'll be might... the first one to tell you that if I'm wrong on something, change my mind, and I will believe you, brother. Like I am not, I'm not opposed to that. But what aggravates me the most in anything is that we cannot have good faith discussions. Like here's the deal: you and I, prior to you reading that chat, we were actually having a really good discussion. We actually agree on a lot of stuff, and I can understand your positioning, but as soon as you bring those bad faith people into the conversation, what happens? It gets side railed, and you start arguing over the dumbest shit that isn't even applicable, and it's not even truthful. Never did I say I'd vote for Biden. Matter of no, fact, well, if I, my proponent is a Second Amendment absolutist, and that's why I'm not voting for Trump, why the fuck would I vote for Joe Biden? It doesn't uh, even make sense! I'll say, on the one hand, that, <laughs> that chat might have been from the beginning before you said you'd vote Libertarian, which is, uh, you know... Oh, okay, fair enough, say. fair enough. Now, but flip, wait, flip wait, was it? Was it? Are you... Oh, no, 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 that, that, it, it was from a while, but I, 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 okay, know, okay. I know my crowd, and I know who, who's good. By the way, brother, I just want you to know, I, I do this for I entertainment know purposes. It's no, not you, but your audience. I want your audience to know, it's like, look, I don't hate people. I, I don't. I, I genuinely do it, not like it bad faith for, debaters. I cannot stand it. I well, can't because you're lying and we don't may, have to lie. We can, we can may, be honest about the it things. It makes for entertaining. It makes. For oh, absolutely. It now, does. Flip, absolutely. Flip side, That's what I, I was saying right in this debate. I was like, it's coming. The cream's going to rise to the top, brother. It's like, nah, I, um, but I, no, I love having my, a conversation. My issue with you is it's going to be the double standard stuff where people are going to say DeSantis supports red flag laws and I, they're not necessarily going to be wrong about that. And then they're going where, to say, where does he support them though? Well, he's, if, if he's not, if he's not battling, uh, I'm going to have a dog making noise. If How do not, you battle as a governor when it's a legislating body? Be, the, be, the vote, Congress, be, be a leader, be a leader, John. Let me, let he me is. adopt you. Let I me agree. Adopt you. I, no, so, I agree on that point. If he's not been vocal enough, then he needs to be more vocal. I will agree okay. with that I now, because ultimately uh, but, I'm not pro DeSantis over the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment comes above DeSantis. So if DeSantis is not doing enough, and I was actually very critical of DeSantis at first. I've talked to his campaign, uh, Christina Pusha on them. I said, you know, I tweeted, I was like, he needs to be more openly critical of this. He needs to be more pro-Second Amendment. And then you look into the red flag laws that were put on the books by his predecessor. I'm kind of like, how did Florida legislating body ever let this go through? But it's because well, but, but, at one point they were purple, but now no, but, they're but, bright but, red. But also, John, it, it, you might want to think it's the same political pressures that led to the bump stock ban where you're dealing with a tragedy 
tragedy. I, I don't know if it came to the uh, link yeah, of the I know. Uh, Parkland but shooting. Here's, but here's the deal. But Okay, so if we are going to succumb to political pressures, does that mean that now we can forego the individual rights of a free people because of these political pressures? No. Well, but, How but, many but, should, but, I but love some this extent, argument. Shows, some, but it shows you at least to some extent that Look, if you're going to hold Trump's feet to the fire, you better hold DeSantis's feet to the fire. I 100 percent agree. Now, but give me, give me, side, give me. Flip side. Uh, but where am I not doing that with DeSantis versus Trump? Well, I mean, give me, look, he's, give he's, me not, examples. he's not being a leader to to fight the uh, red flag laws in the states. I mean, that's uh, let's if, 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 be vocal. Okay, about so it. And, be more and, vocal about it. I feel, okay, so if we're going to be agreeing upon that, then you've got two different situations entirely. DeSantis passed constitutional carry. Trump attacked the Second Amendment. So DeSantis, in your opinion, is not doing enough. Trump didn't do anything. In fact, he did the opposite. So if you're going to try and make these comparisons, you're flawed from the get-go. No, no. I, one well, attack the Second Amendment. One not doing I, enough, but he is supporting no, it. No, but I, I'm not making these. I'm not making. I'm, I'm just following your logic, and nor am I saying I'm not voting for one candidate. I would not vote for one candidate if he got. So elected. then, who are you representing when you're saying these things that you're saying? Like, who, well, are you I'm, talking I'm, about? I'm, your, I'm, your, asking, your, I'm asking. So you're, asking you're observing question. my positions. Okay, yes. fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, uh, I see. And, I, I'd like to see them be more. But, you know, at the same time, it's just kind of like, oh, and, and, and some I people think people, the, they, the, the political expedience, he makes the, uh, I have to yeah. check into the, the COVID grand jury, does nothing with it. Uh, we'll, we'll legitimize the January 6th narrative. What can he do? Well, he doesn't have federal powers. He's got state I, powers. What I, has he I, done I, in his state? I, gonna, you I'm of gonna, all people know, you live in a state. What has he done? Did he, did he do away with the mandates? Can you do mass mandates now in Florida? Can you do have? Uh, can you I, have COVID I, vaccines? Or can you mandate on your your, your people? All, no, you all, can't. I can tell you one thing. All that I know, it's coming down with my kids. Uh, uh, set aside COVID. They're very vaccine stringent here. They wouldn't let our kids into public school until. This we, is in Florida. Yeah, dude. It was. It was. Really? It was wait, it was, wait, 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 wait. Was this a COVID vaccine? No, 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 no. It's everything yeah, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, okay. Okay. my dog's gonna drive me crazy. One second. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. By the way, I all, I fucking hate you all. Thank you, but no, I'm just playing. <laughs> Oh my God! And I love how people Boy, like scream at me and, um, and John, you are I, in I, too deep in the DeSantis camp, and now seem to be just too prideful to jump to a better candidate like Vivek, especially after all the information we currently know from the primary. That's a fair. That's a fair N comment. I don't think so at all because Vivek doesn't have an actual record. Vivek comes from a big farmer bro background. Vivek is a Trump surrogate, and this is the thing I don't like about Vivek. Vivek has changed his positioning on Israel. He did that. That was in his tweets. You can actually see that. Before, it was like, Israel needs to back off. Then he says they need to mount some head on pikes. And then secondly, Vivek, before he decided to run, was hypercritical of Trump. You can go look at the book. You can go look at the previous tweets that he hasn't deleted. And then he comes out and he says, Trump was the best president of our lifetime, which leads me to ask, then why are you running? Well, no, he, I asked him that question. He answered quite fairly. What did he uh, say? He said, if, if, if he's, someone's got to be... Uh, what do you say? The flag bearer of conservative populist values because of DeSantis and Nikki Haley are not. But that still doesn't answer the question. If Trump's the greatest president. He's running. Why are you running against well, him? Well, because I, I think he, he doesn't think Trump is going to be on the ballot. No, yes, he does. The ballot wasn't even a question before Vivek decided to run. No, no, I, th I think, I think, uh, I think. No, he... it wasn't. No, it was not. No, 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 Vivek no, is mean, a, Vivek is mean, a used car salesman. No, he no, says a lot of things ballot. that are good. No, he says I, a lot I, of things that do resonate with me. I, I agree with that. But he doesn't have a record. And again, his flip-flopping... And then his background? No, I, well, it's, it's, I don't it's, it's, want it's, anyone. This is the this is the one, scre one screen, two films, flip flopping versus realizing the error in their ways. It's only a matter of perspective. Okay, no, no, that's fair. Enough. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. So if that's uh, the, the if the that's Israel, if that's, if that's like the context in which we are going to decide whether or not who we're going to vote for, then I'm going to go with somebody that's got a track record I can more so agree with, and I think that's Ron DeSantis. Yeah, no, that 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 is um, fair enough. I, my my yeah. my point, my ultimate point, or my ultimate. I, at the debate you and I went to, though. I did not see that happening. I did not see Vivek and DeSantis teaming up to take on Christy and Nikki. I thought that was very insightful because I'm kind of like... Oh, you, sorry, you did not foresee that happening. No, okay. no. But I you, thought you Vivek agreed, was going to turn on DeSantis You agree that it, it appeared to be happening in real time? Oh, God, yeah. It, I, don't think, I don't think it was... It wasn't coordinated. I think it was just organic. You think uh, but so? I think, yeah, I don't, I don't think they coordinated. And I think Nikki, Nikki Haley deserves it, as does Chris Christie. Does I that. don't understand why Nikki Haley is gaining as much popularity as she does. She is old guard, because, neocon. Because poll, polls are garbage. They're meant they to manufacture public perception, not represent it. And to and influence she's, voter she's behavior, the deep yes. State, she's the deep state favorite right now. And just wait until uh, DeSantis... What makes you say that, deep state favorite? I, because I think they they want her. She's probably a better She's probably a better Democrat than uh, But than doesn't Biden. that then add to the fact that Trump is also floated her as VP? I don't, well, I, that, that would be one of the DeSantis uh, misinformation stories that I, that no, are actually not. No, that true. wasn't from Wait, DeSantis. Oh, but no, that was from NBC and DeSantis team tweets it out. It's a bunk story. It's a bullshit. I, 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 that's my prediction. Oh, I but and, you don't know. 
And of course, nobody knows because hey, it's based on two sources. I got two dollars on Rumble. It says, "John, you need to do a hey, how to paint like a cultist." Nah, I don't do the paintings anymore. I should. <laughs> that, no, was um, from, that article is from two sources familiar with the conversations and teams. But don't they do the same thing for DeSantis and the Trump people quote it too? I, uh, I well, I don't think so. You find me an example, and I'll recognize if there is one for sure because I'm not. I, I criticize everyone. You're, uh, the underage drinking thing. Which one was that? The thing that we talked about at the beginning of the show oh, where him, he accused the Santas of being a pedophile? Yeah, I, well, I, I think that's uh, not something I would do, but it's something that everyone knows Trump does. But you can see to the fact that Trump does it, though. So what, it's, he, it's he, damn that people... Santas do it, but it's okay if Trump no, does no, no, it, what, though, did right? He calls people names? That he makes accusations that are completely unfounded. Oh, do, do, I, I, I don't know that. So wait, let me guess. Are... You're going to argue though that it has to be covered by NBC to give it validity. validity no, no, no. I, I, context. Say, I don't okay. think anybody took that really seriously any more than when Elon Musk called the guy a pedo. You know, the pedo um, submarine guy. I think it's just huh? calling names and making. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not. I'm not familiar with what you're just referring to. Oh, when, when Elon Musk called someone a pedophile, <laughs> I don't think people Man. really take it literally. Oh, the, the the guy who offered to bring the submarine to save the uh, Indonesian kids in the cave. He got, I didn't know that. he got sued for defamation for this. I have never oh, heard dude, of this. This is it's it's old. It was the uh, remember when the four, uh, what was it like? Oh, I thought it was recent. Okay. In the, yeah, 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 Stuck yeah. in the Thai cave. Mm. Um, but also to to go with your point though, Elon wasn't the president, and he's not no, running no, no, for no, president. No, but but uh, whether or not people think it's juvenile and unbecoming, that I understand. But mm. you're you're eight years into Trump. If you're, you're going to say now now he's gone too far because he called DeSantis, a, you know he suggested that. No, but he it's, called, it's just he it's, no, no. The sun when you when you represent it in that light as if that was the breaking court. No, there's a series of events that have led me up to the point where it's like you're not actually a Republican. You're not a conservative. He's not. When, when he sits there and he advocates for a 15 week abortion ban, saying the reason that we're doing six weeks is because it's losing us elections. Trump's picks were horrible. We lost Pennsylvania to a fucking vegetable. Which, by the way, Fetterman surprised me. Fetterman, Fetterman has Fetterman. really surprised me. Fe Fe um, yeah, no, he's, he's Oz. Oz was a gun grabber. A gun grabber. I, like, Fe Trump Fetter he, Fetterman has come out now, and what did he say? He said about the the. the he's guy been pro-Israel. Menendez. Menendez calling up yep. Menendez corruption, yes. calling up the crisis at the border. I'm kind of like, what the fuck is happening? No, like, like, people he's... like, I saw Kristen Cinema, I saw Manchin, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? No, but but this, this shows you, though, there. that's a testament to the DNC and the levels of corruption that you've got senators saying, wait a minute, like Elon said, you've gone so far left now that I'm automatically positioned centered or right because you've gone off the rails of sanity. Like, I can't, I can't this, vote in accordance has, with you people has, anymore. Has anyone made the joke that uh, you, you you're a Democrat when you literally have a stroke and when your brain heals, you become a conservative. <laughs> if nobody's made that joke, because like, I'm thinking, it's oh an amazing thing. Oh my God, thing. I've never heard that. I've I, never I don't think anybody's that. made that joke. And it's, and it's like, this is That's the old expression. If, you know, if, you, if you're not a liberal when you're a kid, you don't have a heart. And if you're not it a just, conservative, <laughs> but it's like, he, he has a it stroke. It just take a stroke to get you to start thinking rationally. No, no, it's like your brain has to heal before you become, you know, a, 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 a critical thinking um, conservative-ish. Uh, Ken, I, oh, yeah. Uh, it, uh, Cheryl Kin 44 in our locals community says mm -hmm. Trump insulted Kemp because Kemp wanted to lift the lockdown and Trump started with the same with the name calling Kemp attorney general and SOS secretary of state all won re-election due to vote election fraud. If you're interested in reading about research vote election fraud, wait, in wait, Georgia, you're saying that he, he won because of fraud. <laughs> Uh, is that the runoff with Stacey Abrams? Because isn't it funny how Democrats claim the same thing? It's always rigged. Are you not well, noticing uh, a trend? Are you not noticing a trend? It's always rigged. Well, I, all that I know is in Georgia, they never mm -hmm. had any meaningful signature verification. And this is what I love. People like, I hate liberal Sandra Mice says, John Burke getting assassinated in Viva's chat. And yet, here I stand, and you you people have changed my mind on nothing. But the good thing is, though, I'm glad you're making money off of this, though. I, I sincerely mean that. I'm glad that they're donating to you because they appreciate your stance on that. But here, well, me... I'm well, here and I'm still standing. And in fact, I've got 1300. Oh, I just got a dollar. You Okay. Now, <laughs> Ken 1979 says, you mean like you, John, where you just accused Trump of considering Nikki Haley and she has never, <clears throat> she was never in consideration. You liar. <clears throat> that, that story, J John, that story is bullshit. It was an NBC article based on two people familiar with okay, the conversations and team <clears throat> DeSantis went crazy with it. That's those are the types of examples. They I'm, went crazy I, I, with it. Well, no, show yeah, me where they went it, crazy with it. Oh, no, no Twitter, here's the thing. Twitter. If it's a fake article, that's fine. No, then it's, not, it's not true. Okay. Oh, you me. got me. You got me. It's okay. not fake. Now, but I also um, heard Donald Trump Jr. and the rest of them say that uh, Nikki Haley wasn't going to be his VP pick. So if, if people want to zero in on something to that magnitude to say, oh, I got you. Okay. You got me. It was a fake article, but it's still not. It wouldn't be shocking to me. No, but that's, I, that's, I hope that's, you feel good. I hope you feel good that you get. Here's the thing. 
I'm flawed. I'm going to get some things wrong, but don't think that you're going to back me to some kind of like thing. It was like, oh, I got him. No, no, Fair no. enough. Well, you well, got uh, me. But at the same I time, to... I've got a lot of you motherfuckers too. So it's like, well, if you I... want to make this about ego, dick measuring, bro, we can do this all day. Well, but I'm the bottom core things. of this though, no, I'm not, I'm... I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your, your No, no, I know. I know but I'm looking, up, like I'm looking up Trump amnesty, which I'm not even sure is a bad thing depending mm -hmm. on the, uh, depending But you admit on... it happened though. Well, no, I have to, I have to look up. I'm not, that I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not familiar with. And Trump. He offered DACA on the board and Democrats denied it. Pelosi to, wouldn't have it. To how many I think people? it was 8 million. I think it was okay. like 8 million. Yeah. So not, not to the full 30 estimated illegals. No, but even still, it's just, it's, it's such a, a magnitude. It's such to a massive DACA, compromise. See, to the DACA, those are the ones who are already promised. Uh, so I'm, I'm noticing where this but might bro, not be. If you be break the law, you break the law. That's, I mean, I'm, there's no different. Like, so what? So if you break the law, it'd be the same premise of like, I murdered a guy. 20 years ago, but since then I haven't murdered anybody. So I'm good now, right? It's like, you broke the law. You came here illegally. I'm sorry. There is no like um, statute of limitations as far as to say like, hey, yeah, well, as long uh, as you come in, you pay taxes. Just, it's like, no, no, but John, I'm just trying to assess the accuracy of the statement itself. I'm just going to pull this one up. This one comes up. Trump says no amnesty for dreamers, signal support mm -hmm. in broader deal. What year was that? This is 2019. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to look into it. I, 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 into I don't it, want to yeah. make a mistake. Uh, the yeah. other thing I was going to say. Is it was on the I, table. And then the Pelosi old, said no. Forget the. Uh, forget no, no, the, no. I'm sorry. No, wait, wait. They put it on the table. No. I've, look into it. It was on I'll the table. Trump. You have uh, something to do with that. Yeah. The only thing. I'm happier than I am about the NBC article is that you recognized and admitted that see you next Tuesday is less offensive than calling someone C-U-N-T. Which proves my point. But um, why? But you've also proven mine, where you literally said that, yeah, you still wouldn't let your son write such no, a thing. So it's the, clearly no, offensive. The, you're just arguing whether how offensive it is. Well, so no, you're but, trying to get by on a friggin' semantic, and that's no, fine. No, no, if that's, no, no, if no, that's no. the position you want to take, either way, you even said you would not let your own son write something so no, disgusting. Tr true, but the issue was never whether or not it was offensive. The issue was why lie about what he said. And the reason why they had to lie about what he so said So what does, so, but what does see you next Tuesday? What is that an acronym for? It doesn't, for? it doesn't, well, first of all, it, it doesn't matter. Go to dictionary.com. It does no, no, matter. I know. It, no, because the whole, my whole point was, so like, why what is the lie intent about behind why somebody says something? It's the meaning what, behind a word, right? Agreed. But, but if they had mm -hmm. said, if the headline, he says, called or see you next Tuesday, suggesting she's mm -hmm. a C-U-N-T, that would have been 1000% accurate and fair. Why okay. lie about what he okay, said? Okay, no, no, that's that's no, that's a fair assessment. I'll give you that one. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. That I agree with you on. The level of offensiveness. No, again, my point it's is it's subjective, but I think it's I think it's uncalled for, and I think the fact that Roger Stone said that then deleted it, and then you got the people that also he surrounds I'm himself with, I'm like the Dilly Mean did. Team, Dilly Mean Team, whom Donald Trump Jr. has endorsed and said they're great for us, literally called Casey DeSantis a cunt. And he actually tweeted it. I've got those tweets too. If you want me to share them. Yeah. Well, no, no. That 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 I could. We talk about the annoying, bro. You have brought up the Desantis annoying people, but then you've got. I've got six accounts right here that were doxxed by MAGA well, I, on Twitter. I've I, got well, their no, names. The do, the doxing is something that I've even called. Laura That's Luma from MAGA. Myself. Uh, yeah. No, good. No, no, no. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so when we, now I'm not sitting there saying this is one sided. I'm not going to say that this is one sided like up? many people oh, will do. Roger Stone. Hashtag C. I, I'd be surprised if he deleted it only because his motto of politics is attack, attack, attack. Never. What is it? It's attack, attack, attack. Yeah. Never retreat. If yeah, deleted, but then when you're getting right across the calls, that's. Uh, I wouldn't say that's retreating. That's trying to cover your tracks and pull away from like something being used against you at such a high level. Well, hold on. Jonathan Turley chimed in on this. See you next Tuesday, or see you next Tuesday is widely into the yada yada. He denies mm. using vulgar reference. Oh, I'm going to read this. Okay. Uh, mm. John, for those who are interested in following your newsletter, where can they find you? <laughs> A newsletter? <laughs> That's from the, it's from the, I'm interested in subscribing I, I, to you. I newsletter. don't have one, brother. I'm just on Twitter at John Burke 39 Then I stream on Rumble Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. CST. How, how you long do you go me. live for? Uh, we, we uh, usually about an hour, hour and a half. We talk about uh, trending, and I'd love to have you on my show. Sure. Not to debate, but I, I like pulling random topics and just discussing them off off the cuff. Like there's, I don't have a producer for the show. We've been doing very, very well on Rumble. We've been doing very well. Like I, we've had the podcast for two years. It's been it's been very successful, and I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to have this. But I like just pulling articles and then discussing them, uh, giving my opinions on them. And I'm not gonna sit here and say like I'm some kind of expert, but I at least have the balls to say what I think, and I'm not gonna back down for the sake of what the people might feel about me. People can say that I'm getting raked across the coals in your chat, as they've repeatedly done in my own chat. It's like that's fine. You can disagree with me all you want. You're not gonna get me from an ego standpoint. The thing is, if you cannot debate me on policy and prove to me where I was wrong and what I said. I don't really give a damn what you have to say about me. And I've been that way for a very long time. So 
that's what I do on Rumble. <clears throat> and I just, I feel like everybody has this ego. You, you said yourself, like when you run for president, you got to have like some kind of maniacal kind of massive egotistical thing. And I think in some cases you do, but I think if you can come from the position that I do, which is like, I'm, I'm genuinely making good faith arguments here. I'm not fabricating stuff. I'm not trying to pull shit out of my ass to justify my positioning. I genuinely feel the way I do about these policies and I, I do my best to research them. I've seen what Trump does. I've seen what DeSantis does. I'm going with DeSantis on this one. If I had my way, it'd be Massey running. I would love to see Massey run. I could get behind him a hundred percent. There are things that DeSantis says and does that I don't agree with. I am not going to agree. There is not a politician alive that I will 100% blindly agree with across the board. So I'm going to pick who I feel best represents my views and my beliefs, and that's Ron DeSantis. Now, again, people are going to get offended by that, and I don't fucking care. No, I think, my, I think my issue I think is more... that I just don't like bad faith people that are just going to sit there and lie and fabricate and gaslight to just prove themselves right from a sense of ego to make yourself feel better. I genuinely feel for the greater good of this country, we've got to pick the best candidate. And quite honestly, you know, even in the 2016 campaign, I felt like this is not the best that America has to offer. I was I was actually on board with Ben Carson. Yeah, I, I think the people are the issue people are going to have with you is is saying definitively I will not vote for Trump. Mm. When I I I, I I I I think there might be a fair amount of people saying that on the Trump side I will not vote for DeSantis. I oh, think yeah. Yeah. I think at the end of the day I'm not going to tell you what I, I think you're going to well, you're going to vote for whoever the GOP can. Yeah. Think, well, my think, my reasoning behind that though is that what we've seen with Trump and the the ushered in of uh, Macedonian politicians with the Lauren Boberts, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Matt Gates, and the rest of these people, I think it's a clown show at this point. I, I think it's a legitimate clown show. Now, I, I do respect Marjorie Taylor Greene that she's done way more for January 6 people than anyone. That I respect that aspect about her. Other things, I feel like, are we really focusing on this? Like, is this really in it? But anyway, you know, I, I just feel like I want more serious candidates and not old guard conservatives. I want more constitutionally sound people. I want more Chip Roy's. I want more Thomas Massey's. I want more Rand Paul's. I don't want more Lindsey Graham's, Mitt Romney's, McCain's. I don't want more of these people. I am tired of the old guard, neocon, boomer, GOP. It's not work. It's gotten, it's gotten us into wars. It's gotten people killed. I want new blood. And that that's just what my goal is. You know, that's where I stand. Fair enough. Hold on a second. I don't want to end on a cough. <laughs> I have to. John, um, thank you. The, do you feel like I personally attacked you in any way, shape, or form? Me? No. The, my, my, okay. the, the, well, this the Moonlight crowd, writer says you can't debate Burke. He just personally attacks. Where have I personally attacked well, you? Well, you certainly attacked the, cra the audience. Oh, because they're uh, stupid. Yeah. Okay. I just, yeah. And that, that and offends, that, they sit there and they attack me and then I match energy and suddenly you pearl clutch. Oh, you just don't like it when uh, a motherfucker doesn't suck your dick and punches back at you with the same tenacity. <laughs> so I'm sorry if that offends you, but you sound like some fucking liberals right now. Go cry. It's very, go it's cry very to, funny. Go cry to David. Uh, they are going to say the exact same. To oh, it's, it's very. Um, uh, well, anyway. They, uh, I, Either way, I'm glad to have this conversation with no, you. I'm, and I'd I'm, love I'm, to have more conversations with you in the future. I think it's absolutely. It's I, great. I, 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 I'm always open for them. I, I, yeah. well, first of all, this is not going to resolve. This might only confirm the Des hashtag Team DeSantis, Team Trump divide <laughs> on the internet. Oh, it will. Um, it will. I think we're at a point, brother, you're not really going to change many minds. I think people are very made up in their beliefs and saying, this is just who I'm going with. I really don't think many more minds are left to be changed, but it doesn't mean we don't stop trying. No, uh, my only issue is uh, I do wish... Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm noticing it more on the DeSantis side, whatever what? people at some point, they're going to have to unify. Otherwise uh, you're going to, you're going to get, yeah, a, we a are. Loser. You're right. We are. And we are. It's, but at the it's same sort, time it's though, like, it's, I, I hold it against Kamala Harris that she called Joe Biden a racist in no, in no uncertain terms. She and technically then accepted didn't. His beef. What, she didn't look it up. I know. I said the same. Well, she didn't. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I know. No, because you know I said the same thing. In no, the no, debate, no. she inferred. She yeah, inferred you, it. You, you made yeah. the buses. You yeah. made the buses run. So yeah, yeah she, did, and it's she like, didn't use the you, R word. That's well, the thing that irks me about politics. It's like you're so principled when you're doing the runoffs, but then when you make it, then it's like, oh, my God, it's me, bye. But you don't like racists, but you accuse Biden of being a racist, you know, in a roundabout way. And now you're like, oh, we did it, Joe. It's like you're such a hypocrite. Hold oh, on a second. And that, now I just read the uh, the AP fact check, and now I'm convinced that she did call him a racist. So hold on. Uh, so hold on. Share here. Look I'm, up, joking. Yeah, I, I'm joking. I'm no, joking. Yeah, yeah, do it, do it. it says claim Kamala Harris uh, they were fa uh, called former whatever per racist. False. Harris criticized Biden on certain yeah. topics related to race during the debate. Yeah. Oh, what a load <clears> of shit. <throat> um, 
I'll go see what the exact. I, I know she said you're you were responsible for the segregated buses. You so yeah. she didn't. So use she, the R she inferred it. Yeah, I know. She didn't, but so by your own I would logic, not, by your I own have, logic, absolutely. I will never say that yeah. she direct quoted him yeah. as racist. But she definitely. I, well, I said the same thing. It. But she meant it. She meant it, and she was so willing to just you know cast that aside. It's like if he's legitimately a racist, like you claim him to be, then stand oh, by he, your convictions it, and it, deny it, the VP plot. But I, she didn't. I, what no. has she done since she's been VP? Oh, she's embarrassed herself. Nothing. Any, anytime he, she opens he put her mouth. in charge of the southern border, she goes to Guatemala. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So, uh, chat. Okay, just to let the locals know, I screen grabbed all of the uh, tips out there. I'm gonna do a separate locals oh, uh, live good. so I can read them to them. That's I, good. They I, support you like that. No, they're fantastic. And I'm and that's I've awesome. screen grabbed all of the Rumble rants, and I'll do the same for that. I just want to. I'll say my proper goodbyes with John, and I don't want everyone to wait. So I'll set up a local stream <laughs> probably this afternoon. Uh, okay. Everyone out there. Don't be don't be insulted by John's swear words and this his his shouting ah, at the crowd. Get over it, pussies. No, every, I'm kidding. So, I'm so, kidding. No, so, someone someone like DM me and it's very thoughtful. They said, uh, you know, I, I hope you're not offended by what some of the team DeSantis was saying. I was like, what do you? And I was like, well, which one? I was like, oh, the guy who told me to go back to my shithole country. It's like, no, fuck, I don't. I, yeah, I, swear I you, don't like I, that either, dude. I, I, when we not, were at the debates, I mean, fuck, you can attest to this. Oh yeah, when, when they that said group, Quebec, go home. Yeah, and I'm looking, it's like, go fuck yourself. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like that, that's so uncalled for. Like you're sitting there right. And that came from the Nikki Haley side. Yes, absolutely. that came from the Nikki Haley side. I'm like, you know, and maybe there's something to this idea that liberals talk about the racism that exists in the Republican Party. That right there gives credence to it. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, I don't care for Vivek. I don't care for his politics. But Vivek is a, a glorious representation of what the American system through capitalism can offer the world. It's a melting pot. And so if someone like Vivek and his parents can migrate over here and make it big. It's like, bro. That's fucking that's awesome. The, that's, the, that's, the Ameri that's the American dream. That's what people come. Why to. did you come? It's the American fucking dream. It's like, why I would came, you criticize somebody to, for that? To escape, to escape yeah, Canadian yeah, fascism. Yeah. Holy crap! <laughs> All right, yeah. John. Uh, you're a John. What is it, Burke? On Twitter, I'm gonna put the link in. But it's John Burke thirty nine on Twitter. Just J O H N B U R K three nine. Why And uh, like, I gotta. Uh, cause I get banned so much and I'm 39 years old, <laughs> okay, <fine. laughs> dude. I've had so many names. This is the only account I've managed to stick with for a very long period of time. I've scaled back the cussing. I've tried to not with you and the, no, I, no, I, no, I, no. I cut loose on these on my show. I try to be a little bit more polished, a little bit more, um, less cussing, but to tell you the truth though, I love being able to kick back on these shows and just let it be what it is. I, I've, I've given up on the, uh, cussing ban. I've, I've let oh, loose God, on it's so hard. No, yeah. these, these, it's um, hard. Uh, all right, everybody. On Rumble Locals, I will see you sooner than later. I'm going to end the stream, and John and I are going to say our proper goodbyes. Peace, people. See you tomorrow.